from TT Boy TV. Today we have a sexy, unique T girl. This <laughs> Lena Kelly. That's thank, me. <laughs> yeah, thank you for coming. You're very welcome. How's your day going? Just starting. Yeah? Yeah. What time you get up? I got up a little late today. I'm using yeah. early riser, but I got up like 10, 11 today. So. Really? Yeah. Usually you get up <laughs> at what, 6, 7? Yeah, around that. When the sun comes up. Yeah. Just my like rhythm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's you get much more out of the day when you wake up early. I love it. Yeah. yeah. I wish you. What's the secret? Because I can't get up past nine. I don't have one. I just when the sun comes up, it's light in my room, and that's what wakes me up in the morning. Oh yeah, you let yeah. the sun. All right, that's the best way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna ask a lot of questions today, but I know that I looked on your Instagram and you're a skateboarder. I am. Tell me about that. I've been skating for well, I started when I was thirteen. And then I skated till I was about 21. And then I got hurt, hurt my back. Stopped mm. skating till about March. So all in all, I've been skating seven, eight years huh. in total. Uh, <laughs> so you all right now? Yeah, it's better now. Yeah. Still, you know, a little, a little fucked up or whatever, but it's good enough where I can still skate now. And I do Pilates and some physical therapy on, on the side, so... Cool. Tell me about the accident. What happened? Um, it was just skateboarding. I really hurt my back. I landed funny. I t did a weird little twist, and I uh, I have a herniated disc in my back. So wow, yeah, was... it's really shitty. So are you an extremist when it comes to skateboarding? I used to be. Now I'm taking it a little easier. Just street uh. skate a little bit, flat ground. Fuck. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Before I used to throw my down, slip down, like whatever. But now I'm like. Yeah. Take it a little easier. I really, I do it mostly to keep my body fit, and I do love the, it itself, but uh -huh. I actually started up again because I was looking to add a new form of exercise into my routine, uh -huh. and it just kind of hit me over the head. I moved to, like, right near Santa Monica, uh, and it was, like, huh? kind of like a duh moment. I saw everyone skateboarding. I drove by the skate shop where I bought my first skateboard ever, and it just hit me. I was like, I need to start skating again. So, I've been doing that. <laughs> you know, I used to skateboard. Oh, cool. This is way back in the 1860. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it was way back, right? The thing was, I, I love the skateboards, right? They had different style skateboards mm, back then, Very right? different, yeah. They're bigger with the bones, Big wheels. fat ones, You know, right. sat of Santa Cruz, Steve Olson. It was pretty cool. Much flatter. Yeah, right. you know, yeah, bigger. and But you know what happened? I used to see all the skateboard parks, 1980. When I got my first skateboard, when I finally was about ready to do it, guess Maybe what happened? you're old. <laughs> huh? Guess what happened? What happened? They shut all the parks down. Oh, wow. Right? I was like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? <laughs> and I was like, I cried. I still rode my skateboard to school every day. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like yeah, five I mean, miles a day. Uh, they Street skating was like illegal in the town I went to high school in. What? Yeah, like you couldn't ride your skateboard on the street. Really? In Chatham, New York. Yeah. What's next? Oh, New York? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah I want to get to those points. New York. <laughs> huh, that sucks. Crazy. That's I know, absolutely insane. You know, I ask, what's next? What else are they going to take from us? <laughs> right. right? Free speech is on its way out. Mm, yeah, you know. Right? How do you feel about free speech? Sure. I think it's very important. Is that I'm a right big there? advocate. What's behind me? That's the First Amendment. Oh, okay. I'm a big fan. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, free speech, you know. If we don't have free speech, we're nothing but slaves. That's the bedrock, right? Yeah, that's everything. Exactly. I, I wish people understood it. So I think that people should be allowed to say what they want to say. Absolutely. Just deal with the repercussions. Even okay. if they suck, right? Yeah. You know, if you, people should know your shitty opinions about things. Because <laughs> if you if you watch TV before, on a, you know, I'm from before, right? When the sure. free <laughs> free speech. But if you watch Fred Sanford, you ever watch him? No. Sanford and Son. Oh, Sanford and Son. Right? Sure. He's talking a lot of shit, a yeah. lot of racist stuff, right? Sure. But I lo everybody loved it. Archie Bunker. You ever watched the? Um, I know of Archie All in Bunker, the Family, right? All in the Family. I know of it, but I've never watched it. Yeah, so they're all racist, right? But they were. He was actually <laughs> married to a black woman. Okay. So he was really advocating the stupidity of. Sure. Of you know Putting it on display racism, or whatever. Right. right? But you know. Just still, free speech is so important, no matter of course. what. Yeah, so, I'm a big fan. please, everybody out there, respect, <laughs> love, appreciate free speech. Definitely. Let's, uh, everybody, if somebody next to you says something, tell them to fuck off. Because exactly. it's, it's your free speech. Let's keep it. Let's not go to jail right. for saying fuck off. I want to know everyone's shitty's opinions so I can, like, yeah. you know, avoid yeah. them. <laughs> right, yes, you know what they're thinking, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, if you don't mind, let's start way in the beginning. Sure. Okay? Where were you born? When? Anna? I was born in Pasadena, California Whoa. in 1989. 
I wasn't there for very long. What year? I mean, I'm not, I mean, what month? Excuse March me. March 4th. March 4th, 1989. Yeah. So that makes you a Pisces? That's right. All right. So do you like to drink? I used to like to drink a whole lot, but it's kind of, I don't know, not really into it anymore. Oh, good. Yeah. It doesn't go far. <laughs> I just, ever since I started getting hangovers, kind of really lost interest. Uh, okay. I used to be able to drink like a fish and wake up completely fine the next day. Huh. And the Irish? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Very Irish. But uh, I hit a certain point and that stopped happening. So I just, I'll just have some like drinks with dinner or I'll have drinks at one of the award ceremonies or whatever. Mm, a little but bit, huh? I don't keep beer in the fridge anymore. Oh, you used to I keep it, huh? uh, Yeah, no. I'm, well, that's an Irish tradition. Yes, exactly. You're breaking it. It's all good, though. Mm, you know, breaking the mold. So Pasadena, <laughs> huh? How was yeah. that? Yeah. I don't really remember much. I was very young when I was there. I moved to New York City, like, at an extremely early age, so. Really? Grew up in New York City. In the city? Part. Manhattan? Yeah. Manhattan. So wow. Greenwich Village, right okay. on the border there. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. That's like a Pretty Greenwich. Yeah. That's some Soho. That's really a stylish, you know? Yeah. it's It was really, really awesome upbringing. Can't yeah. complain. Artists. Like very artsy, very yeah. like fashion filled, and very, I don't know, cutting edge, liberal, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, so but you got culture, huh? I think so. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I like to think so. <laughs> that's cool. New York City, huh? Mm hmm. Yeah, my family's from New York. Oh, apart. Bronx, Brooklyn. Cool. Lived in Bushwick for a little while. Oh, like yeah. Four years, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm Puerto Rican, so a lot of Puerto Ricans out there. Oh, huh? really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. You're right. There are a lot of Puerto Ricans out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> so New York. So yeah. So um, how was it? I mean, did you? What did you do out there? How was school? How was growing up there? You know. It was great. I yeah. guess you could say. Um, very accepting. I mean, as accepting as things were in the nineties, which was more accepting than most of the country, but still not nearly where we're at today. Um. I had a lot of like foreign friends, which is really cool. I had like Swedish friends, and I got introduced to like, a lot of like different foods and cultures, and um, really great food. I'm completely spoiled in terms of food. Um, great food out there, right? Amazing food everywhere you turn. So, what's your favorite one? <sighs> the pizza down there, you really can't beat it. The water. The water is what makes the pizza good. Exactly. Yeah. Not many people know that. It, so how they cook the dough is really yeah. the. You know, I was in my uncle's house in upstate, and I was taking a shower, and I was like, this water is so soft. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm talking about? It's different. Yeah. I actually went to high school upstate, so I know exactly what you're talking about. It's not that way in the city? No, I mean, I don't know. It's I had, like, country plumbing upstate New York, so mm -hmm. I was, like, very different. No, but the water, because when you take a shower, you know, you can't even barely feel the water hit you. Very strange. Uh oh, I don't know. I don't quite remember. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I was like, what the hell? It's almost like, I mean, it's really softer, so it's a mm. different, you know, maybe it doesn't have as much chlorine. It I don't tastes know. good. Yeah. It tastes good. Interesting. Maybe That's it makes New York say. people stronger. I don't know. Uh, it tastes better than the California water, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of weird things in California water. I don't want to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, school. So, you know, I want everybody to realize, so it's, tell me, when... You know, when did you decide that you were thinking different things? You were a born a boy, right? Yep, yep. So I want to get it straight, you know? I didn't really decide it. I just, you know, when you're a little kid, you're kind of like a little puppy or like an animal. You don't really, you're not self-conscious. So I was just doing things like I would play with all my sister's toys. I'd dress up in her clothing. I stole all of her pink shit and gave her my blue shit. Uh -huh. Her little blanket or whatever. I we always took her pink shit. Wow. And how, so how was, old was this? This, this like is like three, four, or five. Wow. You know, I started kissing boys and I was like five or six. Wow. So it wow. really wasn't a decision. It's just my innate nature. But um, I kind of got a little closed off once I started getting a little more self conscious because in the 90s, it wasn't quite, there wasn't a lot of knowledge about it wasn't really acceptable. My first and only exposure to trans women was on Jerry Springer, which is definitely not the most flattering way for anyone to be painted in. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, you know, became a little resistant to it, you know, kind of harbored it, um, kept it hidden, you know, for a while. 
Um, and there was a lot of shame there for sure. Um, so it wasn't, you would think in New York City it'd be a breeze, but it wasn't as easy back then as it might have been now. Now it's like everyone embraces you or whatever in these like very coastal liberal cities, but back then it was something I had to hide. Huh. Yeah. So 1989, so you're going to be 30 or... I am oh. 30, yeah. I turned in March. Wow. Yep. Well, happy birthday in March. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so um, there's a lot of pronouns, or you want to be referred gender pronouns. Can you tell me how you um, refer to yourself or how you want somebody to refer to yourself? I just you? prefer to be treated like any other girl. I don't need any special pronouns. I don't need any weird shit. You know what I mean? It's... I just want to be normal, really, at the end of the day. I don't want any special treatment for being trans. I don't mm. want any attention for it. I don't, I want, I'd rather be trans invisible than trans visible. You know, I don't want, it's not the centerpiece of my personality. It's not, you know, I try to make it kind of running in the background rather than something I'm constantly talking about or, um, you know, I don't really go to Pride Parade or anything. I just, you know, would like to live a very normal life and just be treated like any other girl because I don't really give a shit you know I'm just like yeah you're a girl yeah that's it yeah. I don't need any weird pronouns or made up words or anything like that I just want very fundamentally basic interaction in the world you know so maybe you're more real about it than some of the people I like to think so would you think that possibly some people might use those so they can stand out and be Oh, absolutely. See? I think there's a whole whole attention aspect to it. Um, I think it's kind of hip right now to be transgender. There's a lot of hatred for people who are cis or whatever, or straight, you know. Um, cis, what is that? Cis is, some people don't like that word. I don't understand why not. It's just anyone who isn't transgender. You're cis, my mother is cis, you know, people who are just what they are. Girls? Um, Girls, there's cis girls, there's cis guys. Um, there's some people who don't like that word. I don't understand cis. it. Maybe I'm missing something. Um, just to me is the easiest way to mm. denote each, the difference between myself and someone else. Um, but I think there is like a lot of um, attention seeking. In terms of like trying to identify as like some weird non-gender or agender or something on the quote-unquote spectrum, I just think it's very um, a lot of like hip shit going on with that. I know it's very controversial for me to be saying stuff like that, but I mean, it's I grew up struggling with gender dysphoria and being accepted and hiding my feelings, and I just don't feel like people who identify as like non-binary or something had anywhere near of an experience as I did or any other trans person for that matter. And it's sort of like, um, to me, if you were to fake a disease for attention, it's sort of, I'm not saying tr being trans is a disease, but it's taking someone's struggle and adopting it and kind of not really living it, you know, and just, uh, mm -hmm. adopting the word and then the name and I don't know it's kind of obnoxious yeah I kind of understand what you're yeah. saying it's almost like a, a rip off it's a rip off and at the same time it makes it kind of uh, paints the whole transgender thing as kind of silly um, makes it novelty a little bit no? makes it silly and like novelty and it it attracts a lot of negativity towards us because it's like people lump us in with these you know gender trenders or whatever. Oh, that's a cool word. I didn't even heard that. Yeah. Gender trender. <laughs> yeah. So gender it, trender. It lumps cool. us in with the, the crazy attention seeking people. And it's like, for me, I'm somebody who doesn't want any attention for it. So it's like, I feel like we almost had it right. And now it's kind of going a little too far. So mm -hmm. it's like a little disappointing, but I just live my life. I don't, I don't talk shit to anybody about this stuff, you know? I don't hate anyone. I don't call anyone out. I just want to live my life. And if you want to identify some crazy ass, whatever gender, by all means. But I do think it sort of paints actual transgender people in a negative light. You know, I remember, you know, because I was in the business, you know, and probably about 12, 10 to 12 years ago, right? 
the lesbian movement seemed more novelty. Mm. You know, it seemed like, like the girls were, I'm with a girl. Oh, yeah, she tastes so great. And I'll be like, do you really know what you're talking about? <laughs> really? Because, you know, I was just with that girl, and I right. know I understand females. Right. And I'm like, you know, and it was seemed to me 10, 12 years ago, it was heading toward novelty. Sure. Do you, do you think I so? I think a lot of these things go through different phases. And mm -hmm. I used to love lesbian porn about this, that time. Um, yeah. That was like my intro to porn, yeah. actually. I, my first thing I ever wanted to watch was lesbian porn. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I think, I don't know, it's when new things arrive on the scene, there's a whole lot of different ways it's, they're interpreted. Some yeah. silly, some not, but I don't know. Things, I think at the end of the day, they sort of, get normalized once the hype dies down you know mm -hmm. and once the knowledge spreads or whatever so right yeah right. It makes a lot of sense yeah it's just hot people always want to be in the hot crowd right and yeah. trans stuff is like really in right now yeah. so <laughs> yeah it's a golden era for trans porn a lot of people are saying so really? yeah we're gonna talk about that a lot of so, it's yeah so the, yeah the thing i was gonna say is that so you had all this a lot of pain growing up, it oh, sounds like. Misery, and sorrow, so, depression, all that, yeah. You know? And let the people understand that, that it wasn't a joke, that you went through pain and agony, and for you just to jump on there and do it for novelty is really uh, maybe Dare unconstitutional. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like uh, offensive, unconstitutional, not righteous. It's, yeah, it's... Oh. It does every trans person a disservice, honestly, who's been struggling their whole life with very real mental issues stemming yeah. from that. So, it's gotta, you know, it's got to be very, uh, just like you said, it's got to do something to your mind. It's a peer pressure thing because when you do drugs, peer pressure, oh, do this and you do it. No, no. So, you know, that, that alone will do something to your mind. But this is way more deep. Much more, North, absolutely, you know, yeah. It's from the, and it's a real because... It's her identity, so... You know, I have a, a very good friend of mine, right? He's a famous porno star, you know, well, well known, right? I'm not going to say his name right now because right. I respect... I, I didn't ask him, you know what I mean? Sure, yeah. But um, his son, right, I think was four years old and said, I, you know, we're going to use a different name. He says, Daddy, I'm not Eric, I'm Erica. Right? And he's like, well, he's a smart guy, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, okay. Got to listen to the little kids, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? He embraced it. And he embraced it so strongly that in Spain, he went to the government and said, I want to change the name. And they said no. Wow. And he became a big battle wow. with the government. So... He says, it's my, it's a, it's a girl now. Mm. I got to change the name. It's my daughter. I can change it if I want to. Good for him. I wish right? my parents had done the same thing because all the signs were there. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was me that, at that age. You know what I mean? Um, and when you're that young, it's like you really speak from the heart. You don't you don't have mo like a yeah. ulterior motives or anything. You're, you're just kind of distracted. Yet. Exactly. Yeah. You're living your truth in the most basic sense of that. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I was like at that age too. I didn't think about things before I did them. I just did them because that was my nature, you know. Mm -hmm. And I wish my parents had done the same thing, but I can't really blame them. The times were much different, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but he beat the court. Wow! With the help Good of tele with the help of television. I'm sure. Yeah. And they said okay. <laughs> that's that's what he kicked their ass. That was that's my boy. Fantastic. He's a killer. <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. So. What did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be a scientist. Wow, really? <laughs> yeah. So you like math? No, I hate it, actually. Wow, wow, That's wow. what I wanted to be before I knew anything about it. I just thought it was kind of neat in appearance. You know what I mean? Uh, um, you wanted to invent something? Or? Uh, I don't know what I wanted. Okay. I wanted to wear well, a lab coat and play with beakers or something. Uh, when you were really young. <laughs> when I was really young, uh, yeah. Five, six, whatever. Yeah, something. like a little, little kid. That was my little weird dream. Uh -huh. Then, I don't know, I didn't really, I couldn't figure out what I wanted to be after that. So, and to this day, even if you ask me, I wouldn't really know. There's a couple of things I would like to do. It'd be fun. Yeah. I always thought it'd be fun to read the weather. Oh, yeah. I was thinking being a doctor would be really fascinating to, like, learn a lot about the body or something. But those are uh -huh. sort of, I don't know, not really in the cards Biology right now. Yeah. Did you yeah. go to college? I did not. I went to a trade school for audio engineering. 
randomly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really? Yeah, which is actually how I know how to edit video, which is how I edit, edit my video. So, what, so what they taught you how to edit? What else they teach you? They taught you a lot about microphones and computers. How are, how are these microphones? They look They're all right? They're great. Yeah, and believe me, I looked at them when I came in here, oh, and I was cool. like, oh, okay, Sennheiser, nice. <laughs> the truth is that one, I've gone through three of them. Yeah. But that one sounds better. Really? So it's crazy. You never know. Yeah. But the yeah, uh, yeah. Shure SM58 is like a $50, $60 microphone, and it's like the most popular one out there. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they tell you about mics, they tell you about... Computers, mics, storing information on computers, just a whole litany of stuff. Um, and when you learn how to use a DAW for recording music, it translates so naturally for doing video editing as well. So it just, that whole skill set, really weird because I had porn wasn't on the radar when I did that. And years and years later now, it just came full circle. And all that shit that I learned that I never used for anything, suddenly it was like so pertinent for my movie. So life is a trip sometimes. Crazy. Right? <laughs> you never know. Life is weird, man. It is for sure. Sometimes you think you're really big and bad, right? And this and that. <laughs> Life will go. Oh, really? Psh, ah! Yeah, absolutely. Psh, ah! Smack you around, slap you around. That's my whole twenties for you. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna go to that. That's all right. So, I know you told me it was kind of rough, you know, in those days in the nineties, sure. right? Absolutely. So, were you popular in school, or did you hide out, or what was it like? I wasn't really. I was sort of like this weird middle ground, you know. The I got picked on a little bit, but I also had a bunch of friends, so it was like. I wasn't a total loner, something like a weirdo. Definitely sort of a, an outlier, for sure. Mm -hmm. I didn't get brutally picked on. I wasn't like, you know, I mean, I did in high school. I went to military school in high school for a year and a half. And Whoa, really? Yeah, I was a bad, bad kid. So You were a bad, what were yeah. you doing? I got into like drinking and drugs really early and I oh. started misbehaving in like eighth grade. And basically it was like a finger wagon kind of thing and I got eaten alive in military school to the point where I was like, you know, I misbehaved to the point that I got expelled and it, that was a blessing like no other because I would, you know, I was miserable, miserable person in high school, in military school. Wow. Um, but before that, I wasn't really picked on. I had good friends who I'd known since I was like five years old. I went to the same school, you know, from pre-K to like, oh, not pre-K, like kindergarten through eighth grade. So I had a really nice core group of friends, you know. Mm -hmm. But then when I went to high school, that's when I really started getting some shit. And yeah, it definitely made me retreat even more into myself for sure. Um, and definitely, you know, the level of shame increased for sure at that point because I had been uprooted from like a really liberal atmosphere and in this very harsh very conservative military prep school hybrid thing and definitely not a good time yeah um I, my grades were great though because i didn't have any friends so <laughs> studied yeah really i mean i want to go back to the drugs oh, okay you know, because <laughs> drugs have a lot of different effects on your mind sure you know yeah. so if you're depressed and you take drugs to make yourself feel better It'll make you feel better, but then when you're coming down... Vicious cycle. Is and that was my entire teen years, basically, and my 20s as well. So yeah. a lot of drugs. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I always bring this statement up, right? There's a famous porno star from the 70s, and he was the, probably the most awarded director in porn history. He was Paul Thomas. I did Vivid, you know, all the years. Sure. The main director. And he said, why... Would I have sex without drugs? <laughs> I understand that sentiment for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Neither why. I won't. Yeah, it's hard to come back after you've done it sometimes in that state of mind. So I can I can relate. <laughs> yeah, that's what he says. I'm 70 now. I'm not doing drugs, so I'm not having sex. Right. But you're already there. You're already saying why have. Sex without drugs, kind of. Yeah. Are you well, saying that? I'm not gonna. I, I would have said that before porn, honestly. But ever since porn, I've actually learned a lot about enjoying sex recreationally without anything. I actually got off the drugs for porn, um, and gave me a lot of perspective in that. Wow. Yeah. That's a big deal. 
pretty big deal. No, yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, that's for anybody out there because some people say, oh, porno. Uh, but now she's saying porno got her out of drugs. It did. You got to take care of your body. You've got to show up on time to these things. You got to maintain rapport with directors and your coworkers. And you can't really do that if you're strung out. I know girls who never stood a chance because they just got into porn and just started partying as soon as they did. And I luckily got that all out of my system before that, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've seen girls, you know, come in, right, and make maybe $2,000 a day, 30 days out of the month. And they were working at Burger King before. So you imagine the difference. I mean, they're, this is the 90s, you know. Right, I mean, sure Even thing. the early thousands, right? And you say, and the girls are going crazy, right? And they're getting, what do you think? They're going out partying, hitting the clubs. So yeah, anyways, you got that out of your system. Very but, much, But yeah. let's go back. <laughs> let's go back into this eighth grade. You said you were doing drugs in seventh, eighth grade? Well, I started smoking weed in eighth grade. In eighth okay. grade, yeah. That's, that's pretty mellow. Yeah, but I started drinking as well in that's the summer mellow. after that, and... Then I got into harder shit. And What's the hard shit? I wouldn't call it hard. It was just, you know, I was drinking a lot of cough syrup, a lot of rub uh doing like duster and stuff like that. And, uh, Doctor was that? Uh, duster, like, you know, nitrous and um, stuff like that. Got into cocaine early in high school. Um, a lot cocaine. of drinking. Uh, I started, like, you know, tripping on, like, you know, mushrooms and acid and stuff. I mean, it was... I was like a human vacuum at that point. Miserable person, put it in front of me, I'll do it. Very experimental, obviously, you know, willing to try anything. Um, yeah, it wasn't long before I, you know, I fell in a bad crowd as soon as I moved away from New York City. I moved upstate um, and went to high school up there. And as soon as I moved up there, I fell into a bad crowd and started smoking cigarettes. Um, Really, anything to get my hands on. If I couldn't get my hands on real drugs, like I said, I would do, you know, cough syrup or Delsum or, like, you know, mm. just going through my mother's pills, Googling them, going on Airwid to figure out if I can get fucked up on them. Mm. Just, um, I just am sort of an addictive, addictive personality and just hated my life. So when you hate your life and you want to escape from it, it's like, you know... Yeah. I, I sort of romanced it as well at that young age, you know. I didn't have any qualms about it, you know. I was like, I don't want to say I felt cool doing it, but there definitely a romantic element to just fucking my whole life up, you know. Uh, crash and burn, <laughs> try exactly. to put it back together. Yeah, and you know, I was also fighting with my parents. And yeah, tell me about, so first, I don't want to lose that sight, but what was your favorite drug? What's your drug of choice? Well, I went through phases, for sure. Um, I mean, I smoked weed throughout all of it. You know what I mean? Um, that could bring you up or down. It doesn't really make you insane, right? Sure. I was really, really into pills in high school, because that was the thing I could get my hands on the most. Mm -hmm. um, cocaine, when I can get it, for sure. Was that the number one? Cocaine? cocaine? No, it's more pills and drinking. Um, if you could get cocaine, would it be I number could, one? If I could, yeah, for sure. So if, let's just like, say that... The drugs are here in front of you, yeah. right? You want to have some fun with a friend or whatever, right? It's nighttime, Friday night, Saturday night, whatever. Yeah. Whatever a good time. And every drug is here. C Coke, crack, heroin, meth, Oxycontin pills, um, ecstasy, pretty much everything. Which one do you take? Well, I wasn't smoking crack or doing meth or heroin. Those three I had enough education about to know to just stay the fuck away from them. Uh, cool. um, there were luckily plenty of other drugs that I could do instead. And if they were all in front of me, I'd probably do them all at once because I would always mix the shit together. Oh, that's not good. Not good at all, no. And But like I said, I went through phases. Like Later on in high school, I was really into ecstasy and molly and shit and partying and raving and all that. And what, uh, It never worked for me, right? No. Ecstasy. But I hear the story, so yeah. can you tell me what it did for you? I mean, you want to dance. You want to fuck everyone in the room. Yeah. <laughs> and when you do fuck them, it feels really great. Uh, okay. um, you get... I mean, I actually sort of have mixed feelings about ecstasy because you can actually have some pretty meaningful um, experiences if you do it responsibly, which these days I kind of can. Um, back then, though, I would just take as much as I could to get as fucked up as I could 
and drink and smoke cigarettes and do whatever other shit was there, you know? So I didn't really, wasn't looking for meaningful experiences back then. Um, I was just looking to get as fucked up as I could, pretty much. Um, Try and forget, huh? Yeah. And there's definitely a social element to it as well, because if you're getting fucked up as hell and everyone around you is getting fucked up as hell, um, there's a kinship there. And, you know, I had a whole gaggle of people I would do drugs with all the time. And, you know, it's sort of you get stuck in that, basically, because somebody's got something or you've got something. And if the weekend's here and your tolerance is finally worn off, you can finally get really fucked up again. I literally would count the days to get my tolerance down so I could get fucked up again. Go up again. Exactly. <laughs> and if my tolerance was high for one thing, I'd do something else because my tolerance would be down. It was stupid. <laughs> uh, you know I talk to, like I said, I always bring up PT. His name was PT, sure. Paul, Paul Thomas. Yeah. And we used to get confused on a second. They'd say, PT, TT, Phil, because I'm <laughs> Phil too. Right? His name's Philip. It's crazy, right? Yeah. But he, was, he told me, he said, hey, man, I had a great time with the drugs. He said, I don't care. Fuck you. <laughs> right? He I said, sort of can relate you know? to that for sure. I didn't die. I almost died a couple times. But I don't really regret it. Yeah, I'm right. glad I had these experiences. I know what it's like to be a complete junkie, so I, mean, I know what to avoid, yeah. you know, <laughs> as a responsible adult. You probably had some fun too, right? Tons of fun. Right. More than I can remember, literally. Smiling, <laughs> laughing. Of course, trashing my or, house. Orgasming or whatever, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So let's go back to your parents because they cared enough to put you in military school. So what what was what was going on, and what type of parents are they? If you don't mind me asking, you know, were they what type of social class, economic class were you in, and what type of parents were they? Were they together? Well, I am adopted actually, which is why I was actually detail we didn't even cover. The reason why I lived in New York at all is because I was adopted to a couple in New York. My biological mother is like a crazy, insane, druggy kind of type, along with her sisters and my grandma. My whole family is like very much in her nature, you know? Mm-hmm. My adopted parents, my had a very cold, very emotionless father, um, who made a good amount of money, but I think was such a workaholic that I never saw him. And my mother was actually a very loving, very tender hearted woman. Um, and she was the one who really, I felt, cared the most. Um, now, my father was the one who wanted to send me to military school, and it was sort of a whatever he says goes kind of situation. Um, the reason why I moved upstate was because my parents, they didn't divorce, they separated. Me and my mother moved upstate with my sister, my adopted sister, and he stayed in New York City. And But he still had sort of a, a hand in my life you know, which is why I went to military school. Um, I guess he, it wasn't so much that he cared. It was more so he didn't want such a poor reflection on his parental work or whatever. I think my mother actually genuinely cared a little more. Um, but she was actually against me going to military school. Um, cause she, you know, I protested so much. I would come home crying all the time. I had to get up at five 30 in the morning, every morning, because I was the last person to get picked up and the first person to get picked up in the morning because I lived so fucking far away from school. Um, I was so miserable and I lived with her. So she actually could see that. You know what I mean? Um, he was not in the picture. So it was like they got divorced. out of sight. Out of, they didn't get divorced. They were just separated. Okay. I don't know the details about that stuff but they weren't technically divorced just they separated he lived in the city and she lived upstate with me and my sister rochester or somewhere around there near albany oh, okay. yeah um chatham new york little town south of albany um but she definitely cared you know um she i definitely feel very blessed to have been adopted by her because my biological mother is like insane um, but she's also been in my life as well, my whole life. So. How old were you said again when you got adopted? Oh, I was like, you know, a little tot. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So that that makes things really. 
confusing or dynamic. Very confusing. I mean, it's a little dynamic too because life is full is about experiences too. Sure. Whether we want to believe or not, it's not all just leave it to Beaver every day. No. Not even close. Right? No. So yeah. that dynamic is, I like to hear because here it's got to have some in the back of the head. They adopted a baby boy, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so, as a man who works hard, maybe he's a strong man. I don't know. Was he a uh, masculine guy? Mm, not so much a macho thing as it was a very cold. Oh. So, yeah. What? What did? How did they feel? Did um, well, I got into like a little bit of trouble as a kid for um, you know like kissing guys and like a caught wearing nail polish once. Um, cross-dressing and stuff they were no they weren't like hardcore fundamentalist christians or anything you know i didn't get lashed for it or anything but it was not anything they would talk to me about or embrace or anything like that um they once the times changed a little bit more after high school when i really started to come in my own and you know be myself or whatever they were accepting you know a little skeptical at first a little worried you know but that's a long time to turn right sure but you know i didn't have a very good history of responsibility so they were like maybe he's acting out maybe this is a phase you know they didn't trust me a lot because i wouldn't trust me either i was a crazy horrible (laughs) teenager um but you know, I think after they saw the positivity you brought my life, they were like, "How can we not accept this? We've never seen her this happy, this you know, um, just um, self confident." You know, big sea change for me. You know, coming to my own, and I think they could see that. So, and that's right after high school. Yeah. So then you're like, I mean, I just want to confirm it. So you are dressing up four or five years old, and then you're going to school, and you're wearing girls' clothes from no, then on? No, 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 no. When I was wearing girls' clothes back then, that was like, well, when I was first doing that, I was like a, such a tiny kid. It was like almost funny. You know what I mean? It was kind of like a goof, goofy kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I started going to school, so I was dressed as a boy, obviously. My mom would buy me boy clothing and dress me, and I'd go to school mm-hmm. in boy clothes, you know? Yeah. Then I started becoming more self-conscious and I would steal my sister's clothing when everyone was at home and wear it or whatever, you know. Um, So you felt uncomfortable wearing boys' clothes to school? Always felt so uncomfortable. Not even just to school, anytime. You know, anything, especially like hyper-masculine things like suits and stuff like that. I always felt like I was wearing like a big bag or something. just felt wrong, which is gender dysphoria, honestly. Um, Mm. It's this weird underlying feeling of just discomfort in like a male presentation Mm -hmm. um it took me a long time to understand it because there wasn't like a lot of education about it back then again i told you that my exposure to trans was like jerry springer like in the most negative light possible so it was like not um a good introduction to you know my feelings um Jerry, by the way, Jerry Springer used to come pick up porno girls all the time. I'm and sure. Put them on a show, you know what I mean? <laughs> Not, I didn't say I he was that. with him, he just put them yeah. on the show. I actually quite like that show, but yeah. I don't think I got a very good expo- initial exposure to trans stuff okay. from it. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be very confusing. Were you confused here and there? Um, here and there. I mean, I was just living in a f- fog of confusion, you know. Um, I first thought I was just gay. Um, because that was like the most basic sort of explanation for my feelings, you know, attracted to men. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, well, I'm like gay or whatever, you know. That was like <laughs> so you said a little explanation. Differently, yeah. Right. But um, just over the years, you learn about yourself and come mm-hmm. to accept certain things, and you meet people along the way who'll help you do that, you know. Um, I had a small crowd of friends in school who I was, like, open with it about, um, who, you know, treated me the way I felt I thought I was, you know? Um, so it was definitely, like, a long-winded education, but here I am. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. yeah. I guess I have another question in that sure. time period, is that you are um, kissing the boys, 
because you're attracted to them, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, when I kissed the girls, I was getting an erection, you know? So you're kissing the boys, you're getting an erection? Sure, yeah. And did you wanted them to suck on it? I mean, I don't really know these things, you know what I mean? It's To this day, it's something I'm not crazy about, um, but only because I consider myself a subby, I'm into being dominated rather than dominating, so when I see a man doing that to me, it sort of paints him in my eyes. I don't want to say unattractive because it's kind of cruel, but for the dynamic I desire in the bedroom, it gives me the opposite effect of what I'm looking for. Um, I, you know, would rather be down there doing it myself than the other way around. So, yeah. That's what satisfies me, you know. I've heard these things because I've did a lot of um, butch movies okay. for my company, yeah. right? The girls, you know? Sure. And the girl will be like, no. Right? Like, she's not doing anything. She's just getting it, right? Right. And it just... <laughs> Everyone's different. Yeah, very... Yeah. You know, it's not that way, but it's that way a little bit, right? You have an idea. And I wonder, you know, it makes me wonder way back, right? Hundreds of years ago, right? What people think they're different, they're really not that much different than they were a few hundred years ago. Sure, you know, right. So and that's how, very true. What, what was going on in people's heads back then when they're feeling this way? Right. It must have really been... Completely... I mean, I you can't get imagine. killed. imagine, right, exactly. Yeah. But you know, it doesn't make sense because if you're not hurting anybody, then what's the problem? Well, people love to get in your business, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we know that. Yeah. So. Especially with uh, social media. Before social media, oh, God. it wasn't... Don't even remind me. It was so crazy. <laughs> but, so yeah. anyways, so that's interesting, you know? So, yeah, you're just... So basically... You want to do that, and you want to be the recipient of all well, that. Well, the way I can sort of think to put it is that if you're attracted to women, you want to fuck a girl, do you want to see her in a big suit and tie? Or would you rather see her in, like, a nice negligee, or like a dress? You want to see the woman in the, I see her the some role. see jeans, you know, something sexy. So right. it's the picture, you know. People don't yeah. understand completely, but it's the puzzle. If you have a puzzle and you have all the pieces together... It makes it more visual, right? Exactly. So you, you talk to somebody, and you see them walking, they smile, you know? Sure. They give you a little love. Yeah. You, oh, yeah, she likes me. Oh, <laughs> the whole picture is better, right? Oh, she, she kissed me, because I love kissing, right? So it's, you kiss. You know, first, in my day, we're kissing yeah. first, right? Of course. We're not bend over, you know, because <laughs> I hear these stories today. Yeah. Right? People don't want to kiss. Yeah. But, you know, it's the whole visual thing. Sweetness, the look, jeans, shape. You like femininity. Yeah. Just, I like masculinity, which is like, yeah. I don't like seeing my man suck my <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, anyways, the picture. <laughs> but that's cool. So, when was your first sexual experience intercourse? I had sex when I was 16. It was when I lost my virginity. But wow. my first sexual experience, I was in eighth grade. I gave a hand job. <laughs> uh, in school? Out of school. Out of school? Yeah. Was it I used fun? To, um, yeah, I liked it. Definitely really exciting. Yeah. Extremely exciting. And the guy got off? I think so. Oh, you saw a little squirt? <laughs> well, I was actually in a dark theater, oh, okay. movie theater. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I felt something, but I didn't see anything. <laughs> uh, cool. So so that was eighth grade. Eighth grade, saying. yeah. And then that's probably like. 13 or something, something like that, 14? Yeah, 13, 14, yeah. Uh, so then at 16, you... 16, I did the dirty, finally. Um, wasn't great. No? <laughs> no. It, was, it was with a boy, of course. Yeah. You know, because I'm not there in that, you know... It I hurt. Mindset. <laughs> oh, okay. I think everyone's first anal hurts, so... Yeah. At least that's the way I guess it matters if you're, you know, you don't have a guy this big or a guy well, that big. Well, that and also... A guy, when they're first doing anal too, doesn't understand the butthole is very tender, very tight thing when you haven't gotten fucked a bunch of times. So it's like, if you just shove it in there, it's going to hurt, you know? <laughs> you need to, like, tenderly kind of mm -hmm. wiggle your way in there at first, you know? Because, um, yeah, even small will still hurt if you just shove it right in there. Mm -hmm. But So the first time wasn't very good, obviously. Well, it was, it was good, and that was exciting, and it was, you know, passionate, and I liked that, but it was a little painful. <laughs> okay. 
I, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't really know much. You know? Sure. I'm in my own little world. You know, I chase girls, you know what I mean? I'm with a girlfriend, so I can't yeah. chase them now. You, know you never had to say, oh, and you put in her butt. Oh, of course, I did a million <laughs> anal scenes, you know, for, for sure, work. Sure, you know? exactly. I mean, I'm a master of, you know, everything pretty much sexually, right? But, yep. uh, but I'm just wondering, the boy, right, that you're with, was he gay or is he not gay because you're a girl, you know? Well, that's the um, thing. The way I see it is if you're a man and you see me and you see me as a woman and that's what is attractive to you, then I wouldn't call you gay. Now, if you see me and you see me as a boy who's cross-dressing and that's the attraction, I would consider that gay. The body part itself to me is kind of irrelevant because when I'm attracted to somebody, I'm not attracted to their dick or any of the body parts. I'm attracted to the whole person, the personality, their physical appearance, the way they present themselves. So when guys see me as a boy or a cross-dresser, to me that signals they're men into men. When they see me as a woman, and that's what is attracted to them, they're into my just overall demeanor and voice and appearance, that to me isn't gay. I just you can't just say it's gay because there's this one body part down there. Um, that to me just doesn't seem right. That's my own little theory on it. I'm not a you know, I don't know the science behind any of it, but to me, when I just from all the interactions I've had with men, that's sort of the conclusion I've come to. Okay, so that's interesting. Was that guy, the first guy, was he gay or you dressed up? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, it was a quickie kind of? Yeah, it wasn't like a relationship or anything. Okay. It was like a, literally like our, both of our first times. Uh, oh, yeah? oh, Some sort wow. of MySpace hookup. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. you know, one of those. All right, cool. So did you have any relationships at a young age? Not really. Hmm? And not at an old age either. I've been very like, I don't know, the longest relationship I've ever had was only 11 months, so... I'm a very independent person, and I'm very picky with the people I spend a lot of time with. I need a ton of alone time. I'm so he needs like a good 12 hours of alone time a day. I'm very introverted, and I don't know. I've just, I've also been a very chaotic person. Like I said, I've been doing a lot of drugs for a long time, partying a lot, and those things are not quite conducive to healthy relationships, so... Well, you might get wild, you know, so it's not a real... I like, have a lot of flings, but yeah. nothing really lasts, you know. Yeah, does that um, hurt your heart at all? Do you care? Or? Not really. I mean, it's kind of thing I'm interested in exploring, a long-term relationship. Something I definitely think about and wonder about. And I see people who have been in them, and I'm intrigued by it and sort of fascinated by people who can stay with one person for a really long time. It's interesting to me, um, but I don't feel like I've missed out on anything because, I mean, a lot of people my age, it's like, if you spent eight years with somebody, imagine what you could have been doing when you weren't with them, if you hadn't been with them for those eight years. If you're just gonna break up at the end of it, it's like, kind of like you wasted your time. Maybe not, you made a learn, learn some stuff, you know, maybe learn, maybe, improved as a person but to me i'm just like i wouldn't get into a relationship with somebody i didn't think i was going to spend like a whole long ass time with you know yeah. um because i don't know i'm very i think of things very existentially so i'm like why would i be with somebody and pour a whole bunch of energy into something i didn't think i was gonna be with them my whole life you know if i thought we were gonna break up in four years I don't know. I just, maybe it's like a little nihilistic of me, but I just don't see the point of it. Yeah, well, you have your own thoughts. Sure, right? yeah. You have your own thoughts. You're not going with, uh, with the crowd. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not going to be like, oh, you're stupid for being in a relationship, you know? Like, mm. it just hasn't really been for me all these years. So. so you never met somebody that you just, wow, I love being with this person all the I time. I have, but they didn't feel the same way, oh, so. Okay. Oh, really? <laughs> and I can't blame them because I've been a crazy person party animal for a long time so oh, you know yeah, yes. i'm a lot to deal with or oh. i was a lot to deal with now i'm a much more calm stable person but yeah, that's what happened yeah. when you got a what did charlie sheen call it that kind of special bloody head 
Oh, yeah, he's got like a dragon blood or dragon something. Blood. Yeah. <laughs> so, right? so when you got that strong blood, <gasps> right. it's hard to control it. Exactly. I've got the dragon's blood, right? <laughs> I don't know. Probably, maybe, right? Something in my family runs, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they're all old. All the old people have been doing drugs their whole lives. So there's some sort of built-in resistance there mm. somewhere. They're all Irish, and they've all been down much rocky roads than I've been down in their life to tell the story of it. So definitely got some sort of genetic resistance to dying of drugs in there somewhere, I think. But yeah, there's some Viking <laughs> blood in the Ir- Irish blood. That is my family. Yeah, we're all part Scandinavian, too, so... so they're- Maybe they like to destroy and conquer. And They're all from Minnesota, too, so uh-huh. a lot of Viking ancestry there. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's cool. So did you, I, it seemed like you weren't doing sports because things were okay. I was actually forced to do sports in military school. They make you do two sports a year, but I was on the bench the whole time, so I didn't really consider that being athletic or anything. What sport? <laughs> Basketball, and I tried out for the football team and didn't make it. Not that I would have wanted to. Anyway... <laughs> it's yeah, so brutal, right? I ended up getting um, assigned a photography duty for the sports because I kind of threw my hands in the air and I was like, I'm not doing this shit. So they had a you know parent teacher conference with my mother. What are we gonna do with this troubled child? Well, he's really into art, so maybe he can take pictures of the sports, and that's kind of where I ended up. But I did sit on the bench for a lot of basketball games before that. <laughs> Which was so stupid looking back on it. I could have been doing so much other stuff, but instead I'm riding around on a bus to these stupid sports games I don't even care about. Sitting on a bench the entire time, you know, it's like, yes. what is the point of any of it, you know? It's very strange because your environment and your upbringing control so much of your you know, of your, what you're doing and what you, could, what you couldn't so do. So much I could have been doing. Yeah, so it's like, you really, it's really hard to get that exact path, you know, I Absolutely, think. Absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely a struggle for me back then, too, because I was so confused. And then you had the drugs in the mix, and you had the having no friends. It's like a whole whirlwind of yeah. chaos, basically. And the father is not really so supportive. No, right? he wasn't even... Probably... I don't um, want to be like, wham, wham, my father wasn't there for me, but he literally physically wasn't, so... Yeah. He <laughs> probably has some strange feelings going on in his head, too. Until I'm he, sure he did, but... Yeah. Like Especially in that time. He's raised in a different time. Very different time. You know, sometimes you can't blame people because it's the program that they've been programmed to be. Oh, sure. He's from, like, Wisconsin, very leave it to beaver upbringing, so. It's like the people are just there, and <clears throat> that's what they've been taught. And sure. You can't hate them. I was bitter before, but, you know, I've kind of matured a little bit, and now I realize people are raised the way they're raised, and it's not always easy to escape the paradigm you're used to, you know, so... What type of guys did you like? I like all sorts of guys. I don't really... I'm into brainy guys. I like smart guys. Mm-hmm. Sure, I'm into, like, you know, physical attraction and everything. But if you're a complete dumbass, I'm, like, not really that interested. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't like guys who are, uh, quote-unquote, players or anything like that. I mean, if you're getting it and you can get it and you're a cool person, I'm okay with that. But if you're just out there doing it to do it, to show off or whatever, I find that kind of revolting um i like so. that word revolting yeah i use it a lot <laughs> <laughs> so i mean because i'm not in the you know this idea so it's same everybody's the same so it's a player there's a player that likes the boys or the likes the girls because you're a girl at this point in time well i've always been not to toot my own horn or anything but i've always been very female passing so mm-hmm. i've attracted a lot of straight men uh-huh. In my day, my day. You look um, like a girl to me, you know. I mean, that's what they all I say. W- I wouldn't <laughs> know the difference. Nobody usually does until I tell them. So, and I do tell them. I'm not. I maybe once my whole life let a guy on without telling him, yeah. and it was fucking horrifying. So I never did it again after that. I gotcha. Sucked his d- and everything. <laughs> and I had so much anxiety after. I was like, I'll never do that ever again. Mm-hmm. Not even for his sake, for my own, because I was so just ridden with anxiety afterwards mm-hmm. he's gonna find out he's gonna come to my house and kick my ass you know et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. yeah that could be it dangerous happens. people yeah. get killed over this shit yeah. so for sure yeah, I mean, over less things yeah i mean yeah people have their 
ideas and that's it. Absolutely. Yeah, and a lot of the guys are, you don't want to threaten certain men's masculinity in front of their friends. It's like, oh, yeah. they will literally kill you in oh, some states. So. Man, you know, man was the biggest killer on the planet. Don't forget that. You know, can't forget that man killed everything in sight. That's and right. It's in the blood. You know? Exactly. So, exactly. Careful with the man, you know what I mean? Exactly. Right, so, so you like... Men or boys or men, pretty much whatever. Kind so, of boys. Males. <laughs> you like males that were smart. I like smart. I like guys who are courteous and respectful. Mm -hmm. um, just because it feels like such a rare thing these days. Um, everyone is so you know um, disrespectful. Disrespectful, and it's always um, why can't I think of the the term here? Um, it's like immediate satisfaction. Um, Sexually, you mean? Or yeah, I mean, or it's like, talk to someone on the internet, it's, hello, hey, how are you, followed by a dick pic, and it's like... Yeah, where's, um, where's the... Where's the, the connection, where's the courting, where's the, you know, the flirting and the getting to know each other, and yeah. I find that stuff makes it so much better. Where's know? the kissing? Exactly. Whatever happened to all the bases you had to cross? First, second, third base. It's like I'm not in that world, but <laughs> I hear about it. So you're telling yeah. me it's true. It's no, it's not nice, huh? Well, I don't know if it's just the internet that's corrupting my um, vision of reality or what, but I don't want to paint with too broad a brush. There are really great guys out there who are respectful and courteous and kind, and those are the ones I'm attracted to. You can be the hottest dude ever carved out of stone. If you're a douchebag, I'm out the door. You know, I'm not into it. What defines a douchebag, really? The dick pic guy. Or the guy, you know, I told them... Recently, I was talking to somebody, and I told him... I forget what I said to him, and he told me to chill. I said, don't tell me to chill. And he said, chill, after that. And I was like, I was like, that's a douchebag to me. Somebody who doesn't listen to my feelings, you know, and I'm asking for some respect, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm not like, you know, Joe Pesci, no respect or anything, but it's like a basic level of like kindness and courtesy towards females goes a long way with me you know yeah. um i just i find that so ugly you know i i agree with you a hundred thousand trillion percent because <laughs> it's all the way around you know sure. uh, because there's nothing worse for me to see a beautiful girl you know talk in a manner that's so disrespectful to herself mm. and act that way. It's just, you know, all the way around, you know, from, you know, just, you know, th acting crazy to you or sexually or just not having any uh, nice emotion or pretty emotion or how you want to state it in their heart, right? So just pure disrespect all over it really is ugly. It's hideous, yeah. yeah. And it's a, I didn't grow up in that era. When I see it, I say, how can... You know, beautiful people can be more stuck up and more, you know, whatever. That's common. But this is a, at a great number. Do you sure. see what I mean, right? Absolutely, it's yeah. Like, I agree with it. You know, why can't you be nice to somebody and they're nice to you and everybody's happy? I know, and I, I'm so nice to people. You know what I mean? I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm never looking for drama. I'm never looking to, you know, backstab anyone or anything. I'm just like, I appreciate, you know genuine people because i try to be genuine myself i don't know a lot of fake out there so yeah. do you get upset sometimes when you're so genuine that when they're rude or where you get you double trip because well, it's horrible because i you know spent a fair amount of time self-reflecting and trying to improve myself as a person like you know i tend to notice when i'm not my best behavior maybe after the fact if i'm like in the heat of the moment of some interaction i'm having i'm not always proud of how i behave you know um, but I think it's important for people to reflect, self-reflect, mm -hmm. and see, you know, where they might be acting poorly. And that was to me, when I told you about the, the chill story, it's like, the ugliest part about that is he wasn't willing to just take a step back and be like, okay, that was like really rude and disrespectful to this person who has been nothing but nice to you, you know, this entire conversation. So, very fed up with people. <laughs> I agree. I, I, here's what I have noticed. Maybe some people might relate. Is that when you're really nice, 
you try to be as nice as you can be. But you're, sure. you're really genuinely nice, you know, not yeah. just trying. And then when somebody's rude to you, you get double pissed off. Oh, I know. You feel so wronged. When you do business, right? It's a sea of sharks. Sure, right? yeah. I did a lot of business for a lot of years. And you come at everybody straight, right? But exactly. so many people come at them dirty. So when they give back the dirt, it's not a big deal. But when you get the dirt and you didn't give dirt, whew, you flip. I lose it. Yeah, for sure. It's not. It's your fault. It was my fault. You know, it is because that's just what goes it's on. It's an outrage. But right. it is the way it is. It just is irritating. Yeah. You understand? Absolutely. absolutely. Uh, Deal with it all the time. <laughs> yeah, you know. It's just like, so you say, oh, do I got to be good in business? I got to be a dirty bastard? No, but I don't want to be a dirty bastard. It's good to be a genuine upfront person. I think the people who matter will appreciate that kind of thing. I know I do. Yeah. You know? I wonder sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so... After high school, what did you do? Nothing, really. I partied. I like partying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't go to I went to college for like a semester and a half, dropped out, because um, I got really into cocaine, um, among other things. I just snorting it. Snorting course. it, yeah. Mm -hmm. I smoked oh, it a few times. What did it do to you? Exactly. Snorting it or? Cocaine. Or what did it, yeah, well, how did it make you feel? Um, well, I used to do it like alone with like, two or three other people. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, we didn't do anything. We sat there listening to music and talking. And really? We didn't go out partying or anything on it. It was like this weird kind of like secretive little really? thing. Yeah. Cocaine never made me really hyped up or anything. It really just gave me this kind of weird buzz. Um, and You had good cocaine? Maybe it wasn't good. I don't know what it was, but Upstate. I mean, I still dabble in it a little bit today. I, you know, I like it. I won't lie. Um, it didn't. It didn't get I'm you. But I'm not throwing my life down the gutter anymore. You know. I think you can do drugs responsibly. Um, make sure your shit is in order before you do them. You know, and don't let it, you know, yeah. ruin your life. But did it get you in the mood or anything for sex? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. all drugs pretty much get me that way, except <laughs> for weed. I always get really uh -huh. weird and not horny when I smoke weed. Um, <laughs> I think cocaine is a sex drug. That's how I see cocaine. Oh, I love fucking on coke. Yeah, it's oh, great. Okay. Um, I want to make sure. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> sure. Sit there and just snort and talk. Now you were. In. Well, I mean, it would depend on who I was with. I went through a bunch of different crowds with the cocaine. Um, but one thing that remained steady was that I wasn't doing shit with my life, and I was spending the little bit of money I had on it and throwing my life down the gutter and. I mean, I would drink a lot as well, you know, and mix it with, like, psychedelics and all that mix stuff. Mix cocaine so, with psychedelics? Yeah, we do, like, mushrooms or some acid. How did that work? I mean, well. <laughs> well be careful, people. Yeah. <laughs> really? Because I... I mean, I mixed... Back then, I would just kind of... Didn't really give a fuck about my life, so uh -huh. if there were two things in front of me, it didn't really matter what they were. I would just do them to feel, experiment, and see how it felt. And you know, everyone in the room with me is of the same mind. So I mean, mushrooms are a whole different world than cocaine. Yeah, yeah. So like you Those mix them actually, together. I'm an advocate for mushrooms. I actually quite like them oh, a lot. Cool. Yeah, it's a good time. I really like them. I did some at the Tombstone. Uh, Birdcage Theater, and the ghosts were coming out. Oh, with man, us. yeah. It was crazy. There's a but. whole spectrum of experiences you can have on them. But on cocaine and that together, I mean, what did it do? I mean, that just turns your trip into, like, a hyper... Sometimes, like, bad, honestly. I've had, really? like, bad trips before because it got... I got anxiety, you know, from uh -huh. the stimulant effect mixed with the psychedelics. So yeah, a little, it's easy to let it spin out of control uh -huh. when you do those things together. Um and I've even, like, walked to the hospital and shit, you know, like, I'm dying, I'm going to die, you know, thinking I was having an anxiety attack slash bad trip. Um, so it's got to be careful mixing stimulants with your psychedelics yeah. for sure. Um, but if you're hardy, like I have been in the past, you can pretty much do whatever and have a good time. Um, I actually had to stop doing drugs for a while because I had such a bad trip on mushrooms that... It gave me, like, this really bad clinical anxiety. Wow. And for a few years, I was on Xanax and shit. Wow. Yeah. So after, during it, you tripped and then... 
it was so bad that I actually, like, years following, had clinical anxiety diagnosed and everything. Mm-hmm. Panic anxiety, I have panic attacks, you know. Get short of breath, lose sensation in my fingers, you know, get pins and needles, lose control of my fingers. Like, wow, really? Yeah, almost pass out, like really bad. I'd be, dr- I was driving once and I had a panic attack and like had to pull over, almost crashed my car. <laughs> like, because yeah. you mixed them, you're saying? Well, I actually ha- wasn't on cocaine and mushrooms when I had this really bad trip. This was just a one off experience. I was actually on the subway in New York City which is what triggered me. I sort of started getting really claustrophobic. And when I got off the train, I was very close to my house, but I didn't know where I was. I was very disoriented. But you were not on I was on mushrooms, yeah, but just mushrooms. We hadn't done any coke or anything. And I was with a friend of mine, and he was starting to freak out a little bit, and it was freaking me out and started, like, spiraling. So I had, that was my first, like, major major anxiety attack and it lasted you know onwards after that for like good four or five years you know i had to slow up on the cocaine i couldn't do any adderall or any like stimulants or anything sort of saved me in a weird way because it um i wasn't able to do drugs like i was doing them before ecstasy anything like that i couldn't for years i could not do them because I would get such horrible anxiety from them and sort of in a weird way saved me as miserable as it was having panic attacks. But, um, once I was scared of doing it, huh? Yeah. Because I couldn't do anything that would change my headspace because it was like, you know, after a while I got back into it, which is sort of, again, my downfall because I got really back into drugs after that and ended up right where I was before. You know, I'm just partying and throwing my life in the gutter. Almost on a worse level, though, because I sort of felt this weird invincibility about it because I had done it so much before that I felt like I could handle even more or anything as I felt older and more, you know, resilient or whatever. Um, But it all came to a head. Basically, I went homeless. And right around that time that I went homeless is when porn fell in my lap and... You had a job before? I had so many different jobs. Yeah, I've worked at an animal hospital. I worked at a head shop. I've silk screened at factories. Um, I did a lot of, like, food service jobs, retail. Um, I walked dogs for a while. I mean, I did a whole litany of shit. Jack of all trades? Very much so, except mm. not really because I was so fucking bad at each job. Really? that I didn't work there for more than, like, you know, a few months at a time. Animal Hospital, I was there for a few years, but that's because I actually found the, the work very rewarding. Nice. So. Animals don't talk back. No, and they're really cute, and I feel satisfied in doing it, you know. Helping them out, yeah. Yeah, helping them. We took strays in. I'd help the strays. I'd walk them. I'd take care of them, you know. Yeah. I actually still have a dog I gave to my mother to this day that I got working there. I think, do you think sometimes when you have a lot of not say abuse, but a little abuse. Give you a little bit of psychological abuse, you know, with your transition, right? Sure. And um, you know, you you have this a little hole inside you, a pain, like almost like a tunnel of pain. And sometimes the dogs are nice, you know, because they just oh, they're wonderful. They love you, right? Yeah, unconditional love. Right. right. They but, don't care what you've done. Right. It just. They're happy to see you. And you want to give your love to somebody who appreciates it. Of course. And they certainly do. I love animals. I mean, I have such a soft spot for animals. Like, we always had, like, six cats growing up. So, six cats, turtles, dogs, like a whole zoo at the house. So, So maybe you're going to have a lot of children, huh? I don't think so. (laughs) Kids are one thing, you know. I'd rather have a cat. (laughs) I like to hear the wildest sexual experience you've had. That's a really easy one for me, honestly. Um, like I said, I was homeless right before I moved out west and did porn and doing a whole lot of drugs. And I got really fucked up one night. And I was at a club, and I don't really remember the circumstances that led up to this, but I had a, like an actual gangbang on the roof of this club, like completely impromptu, recreational, no cameras. It was like four people. Um, very spotty memory of it, but that was definitely the wildest shit I've ever done. <laughs> like, 
in terms of just raw recreational sex. So how does that work? I mean, because you're at a club, right? I was at a club, right? Is it a, a regular club? Or what kind of, just it was just a regular nightclub in upstate New York. And so then, I mean, because that, you know, this makes me wonder. So they, you go upstairs with them or all together? One or? of them had like roof access or something. This is like a small, like LGBT friendly club oh, okay, in upstate New York. That's what I want to know. So yeah. it's like that, right? Yeah. It was because more a surprise. I have a dick. No, it was like yeah, okay. there was an awareness there for sure. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, that was an experience. <laughs> and you totally did your transition by now, right? Because you're at Oh, at that point. point yeah. Well, I've been done for a long time, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I finished transitioning like just a few months after I started, basically, because I had a very um, feminine starting point. So um, it didn't take a whole lot to cross the threshold. But you were really dressed. Cause I thought it seemed to me more like after high school, you're more always dressed up or you always were. Oh, I mean, I started presenting, as it's known, right after high school, yeah. Right after high school, so yeah. really. But before high school, you were had to dress up with boy clothes. You didn't like it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. No, I was completely so, closed off. So like, after high yeah. school, the whole way through your... Well, as soon as I had my independence, you know, 18, move out of the house, you know. I mean... It was different. I had, I had sort of a double life for a little while. Um, I started taking hormones in secret. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about how does that stuff work? I don't even know. And you go to the doctor. I mean, New York, it's really easy. There's an LGBT clinic. You go there. They take one look at you and you tell them what you want, and they're like, "Okay, here's your prescription. Of we'll weigh you and like you know take your fucking blood pressure, and that's pretty much you know all they need to know." But what um, do they give you? What they give you uh, an anti androgen which is a testosterone reduction medication and they give you estrogen to boost your estrogen levels so what is what does that do to you it feminizes you um your skin gets softer you get more fat in your face and on your body like more feminine composition of fat throughout your whole body which just makes you look more feminine um did you have more muscle on you before a lot more did i was a little muscle? more sinewy yeah for sure um, I was never built or anything, but um, your little, if you look at a woman and a man, the woman's like a little softer, a little smoother, you know what I mean? Um, men tend to be a little rougher, the skin's rougher, you can see their muscles are a little more toned, you know? Not you, just kidding. <laughs> You're nice and toned. Um, <laughs> I'm 51. Right, exactly. But if you started taking an anti-androgen and a estrogen, you would lose a lot of that muscle mass. It shrinks your muscles. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a trip, yeah, because I, I always yeah. kind of wanted to know. I didn't do my research. but So those are the two pills yep. that you took, and that's it the whole time? Yeah. Well, actually, I got my, um, I had uh, my nuts removed, so I didn't have to take the anti-androgen after that. That was a few years ago. That's a big deal. Right? Yeah, That's it was a big deal. Big deal. Big deal psychologically, very small deal physically, though. It was like the uh -huh. easiest surgery. It was easier than getting teeth pulled. And I've had a bunch of teeth pulled. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a yeah. trip, yeah. Wow, yeah. But That's a trip. That's it so was definitely a great, great thing, for so sure. are you going to get rid of the rest of the package? At this point, I don't think so. It's extremely expensive to get a good job. I mean, you can go get a government pussy for not that much money. I haven't heard anything great about that. Not judging anyone. I actually don't, not totally versed in the knowledge on that. What I hear is that there are doctors who are like incredibly good at it. They're like artists at it. And, but you got to pay top dollar and wait like a million years to see them. Wow. And then you've got a full year of like really arduous, really um, grotesque recovery period. Um, really? Dilating every day. So you got to stick something in there and keep it open because it's like a wound when you first get it done. you got to keep it open or it'll heal shut. I know. It's very um, graphic thought for me because everything down there works right now. So I'm like, I kind of don't want to rock the boat in that way. But at the same time, even if I wanted to, it'd be such an expense. And, you know, I'm a trans porn star. So my money maker is my money maker. Mm -hmm. And... You know, before I was in porn, I was really, I had a lot of dysphoria about it, a lot of body dysphoria about my dick. And I've come to really um, embrace it, actually, since starting porn, because I, I found out 
that there's a whole world of people out there who just will love you for who you are and embrace you for what you were born with. And I've sort of grown accustomed to it. I'm not going to say I love having it. I don't. It's a pain in the butt. It's in the way of certain things I like to wear. And it always goes off in the TSA scanner when you go to the airport. It's like a fucking contraband, potential contraband. Well, well, I don't understand. When you go through the scanner, before you even go through it, it reads you as a male or a female. And then when you go through it, it's like, oh, there's like a mass down there that shouldn't be there. Nice. And it comes up. You can even see it when you walk through. It's on a screen. There's a little person and it shows this little like red spot, you know, where that is. Every damn time I go through there, I get patted down there. So it does bring us challenges for sure. But it's also, you know, brought me a great deal of success and happiness. Um monetarily and psychologically so i like i said don't love it but i've grown to accept it in a way that's a really interesting idea really yeah, yeah. and i think a lot of girls in trans porn feel the same way um i came into it hating it you know what i mean mm -hmm. um i was always like this such a source of angst for me but now i'm just like yeah you know whatever the balls coming out was a big deal for me because that was what was producing a lot of testosterone, um, which is like poison to a trans girl, you know. Um, we call it testosterone poisoning, some of us. Oh, yeah. Puberty, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. Yep. <laughs> I, so you got me, uh, you know, wondering about before. Yeah. You're saying that these doctors, they're going to be specialized plastic surgeons pretty much, right? Yeah. Like the top of the top. I know a very famous um garth fisher he's a very but he didn't do those he's you know sure uh, famous plastic surgeon yeah and he gets paid big bucks so how much does it cost for these artists to work on you i hear it's around 30 grand oh okay yeah oh it's not crazy crazy just a, it's not a million dollars but no. i could buy a really nice new car with that money or get a house like put down money on a house or mm -hmm. buy an, an awesome set of gear for my videos up i could shoot two dvds with that money i do a whole bunch of stuff with that money that i wouldn't really want to spend on that right now that's interesting it takes a year for them to be able to do it or it takes a year to recuperate it's the recovery period yeah it's a very long drawn out mm -hmm. experience who's the best doctor that you heard about i actually don't remember any of the names of them but mm -hmm. i know just from you know all the years of googling trans shit there's like a handful of doctors around the world who are like known. It's just like there are a handful of doctors known for the feminine facial surgery. Um, Have you, you had know, any? I had a, a lip lift done, which actually a lot of like cis women have done, done anyway. Um, it's like a little, just it kind of brings the top lip up a little bit. Gives a little more teeth, gives you a cuter little smile. It's a very minor, minor thing, but I thought I would just get a little, little something, you know. <laughs> that's, that's a trip. It's so if you want to do the operation, they're there available, or does it, is there a big long line? Huge wait time too. So how much time? Months at least. Months? Okay. Um, I've heard years for some people. So the specialist. Job. Well, it's like nowadays, so many people are coming out as trans because it's becoming more and more acceptable that it's like the list mm -hmm. gets bigger and bigger and bigger all the time, and you know, it's not my priorities at all. I'm also interested in one thing because, you know, I'm a very well-known porn star, right? I did a lot of, 3,000 movies, whatever. You know? Wow, yeah. Performer of the Year numerous times, all mm -hmm. this stuff, right? And I was always into the way it looked, right? What? The vagina. Yeah. Right? I'm definitely, a, you know, that's one of my main focuses. So you're telling me, are these, are these plastic surgeons so good that they can make it look I've seen some very, very convincing jobs before. Yeah, that that's really blows my mind. Yeah, really, like really. If I had seen it without nobody telling me, I'm not exactly a pussy expert or anything, <laughs> but you know, I wouldn't really know. Because uh -huh. you know, they do a, the good ones do a very, um, very tight, very tucked away, nice looking job. That's you know, my, that's mind blowing. And it can do you know? Do they get wet? I mean, is it? I have heard that, um, well, basically, and I'm not a scientist or anything, the skin down there, whether it's a dick or a pussy, 
it's the same type of skin. When you take estrogen, I hear that the commands being sent down there get mixed up and you get female commands. I actually, it's my cock smells like a vagina um, from the hormones. So what happens is the stuff down there begins to act according to the signals that the hormones are giving it. And I have heard that some of them do have a little bit of self-lubrication. Whether or not that's true or not, some people might be wishful thinking. I wouldn't know. I haven't had the surgery done, nor have I ever experienced a post-op vagina. Mm-hmm. I have heard that before, but don't take my word for it. Right. I'm just speaking on rumor, the rumor mill. I mean, the future of of everything is it's gonna, crazy right now. <laughs> so crazy. I mean, not just you know, um, boys becoming women and women becoming boys, but robots. Robots are in the future. They're coming. They're coming. <laughs> Literally, sex robots. Yeah. And if you're telling me right now that these surgeons are so good at taking something apart, putting it back together. When they don't have to do that, and it's already just make it, you know, it's not like a double work, it's single work. Right. This is going to come out perfect, so what is it going to be like in, in the future? <sighs> Who knows? You know it's it's going to be crazy, though. It's going to be crazy. It's definitely very it's, crazy. I see it. I keep saying this to myself, but let me get a quick, this is off the subject a little bit. I think it's the alien virus, the internet robot, alien virus, whatever, however it wants to, uh, be, whatever it wants to become, sure. is going to stop population. Well, if the trends are any sign of it, then sure. I mean, if you let these things continue to go and go and go and go, hypothetically, um, I mean, things get more and more realistic over time. Basically, the graphics in video games, uh, in simulations, sex dolls, sex toys, everything gets better and better and better, so... Hypothetically, if you just let this run its course for hundreds of years, yeah, we'll probably end up with some superhuman sex cyborg. He would never be able to tell the difference whether they were human or not. And yeah, sure. I mean, I don't know if it means the end of civilization, but it certainly is going to add a lot of. It'll change the the uh, the landscape. I think for sure. Yeah, I mean, something's going to happen. Strange. We might be. Yeah, but it happens so slowly that people can't even, it's hard to expect these things, you know? Maybe. Why not? It's, yeah. Because in my time, it's happening pretty fast. All right, say. things get faster and faster as time goes on. We are here by the future. Right. The graph is very much like that. We might be here. Right. And they might <laughs> be there. You never know. AI is pretty crazy. Yeah, you know? it's going to be crazy. So I guess let's go to what made you decide to want to get in the business and how? Did you make your way in? It was kind of a weird coincidence. Um, I, like I said, I was homeless for a little while. Where were you homeless at? This is in upstate New York. It's cold. Well, it was going to be cold, which actually brings me to my story pretty much. Um, I was planning on moving out west to Venice Beach to be homeless there rather than in New York because the winter was coming. You know, inevitably. And New York winters are very fucking awful. Um, My friend from New York had just been in L.A. for a little while. And she's a tattoo artist. She came back to New York. We hung out. She told me she had met porn people out there. And I was like, you know, at this really crossroads point in my life, I was doing a lot of drugs. I was sleeping in my car. I was going to move out there anyway, drive my car out there. And my crazy ass was just like, give me some numbers. Give me some names. I want to talk to, let me see if I can get in with some of these people. Like, I don't know why I wanted to or what I wanted. It just was an opportunity I just kind of saw, you know. Um, So I got a number from this guy. Um. And I messaged him with some pictures. What's his name? The fuck was his name? B Nasty or something. Um, anyway, he doesn't. He hasn't been active in a number of years. Um, but he was like, "Oh yeah, just email Groovy 
admin at Groovy or Groovy at Groovy admin at Groovy.com or what? There's like an email for Groovy, which is like the biggest TS network oh, really? site. So it's called Groovy? Groovy. Groovy? Groovy. It's like a very old, um, very well established TS porn. G R U B Y? G R O O B Y. Groovy. It's the last name of the owner. Okay. Um, Anyway, he gave me this email. I took some like pictures. I had this kid buy me lingerie. Took some sexy pics in this person's living, my friend's kitchen, who I had parked my car in this guy's backyard. And he would let me kind of hang out in there. I did a little bit of camming up in his uh, spot when he wasn't home or whatever. Anyway, I don't wanna draw it out too much, but they were like, yeah, sure come out to Vegas, we'll get you some shoots or whatever. I was like, not planning on moving to Vegas, but I didn't really have any good plans anyway. So I was like, shit, all right, I'll come to Vegas, I don't care. I'll move to Vegas instead of Venice Beach. I went on Craigslist, I arranged a little room out there for 300 bucks a month. And I sold, I had like a little bit of music gear, sold that. I was seeing a guy whose dad was electrocuted in the Navy on a job site and he had a whole shit ton of weed cause he grew cause he would cook and that was his medication. He gave me a, he used to give me these big ass bags of like weed uh, trimmings. So I went to the mechanic in my little town and I gave him a bunch of weed, a couple hundred dollars. And I said, give me a car. Cause my car was a total piece of shit. Barely ran, the brakes barely worked. It wasn't drivable really. You were living in that car. The probably. one that I was living in, yeah. Okay. I said, give me a car that'll get me across the country. It doesn't need to run after that. Just get me something that'll get me there, you know? A couple of days later, he gets me the Subaru. He calls me, he's like, I got this O2 Subaru. Um, I was like, I'll take it, give it to me. He showed me a picture of it. I didn't give a shit what it looked like. You know what I mean? It's actually kind of cute. Um, Subaru Brat or something like that? It was a Subaru Forester. Oh, okay. Yeah, black Subaru Forester. And it did run. I threw all my shit in the back of it. I drove out to Vegas, shot my little scenes um, with Groovy. So, yeah, let's go. You shot little scenes? Well, I call them my little scenes because it was my first scenes ever, so, you know. But this is uh, with a guy or a single? I did, what was it, two solos and a hardcore, I think was my first little entrance into it. So how, I mean, you know, I, I was a performer, of course. So yeah. the anxiety, nervousness... Your brain can do weird things. So I wasn't nervous at all, actually. Mm -hmm. I think I was too, honestly, too drug-addled to be nervous. Um, I was still coming off like a long bender, basically like an all-summer long bender. So you had the mindset you don't care about anything? I didn't much? give a fuck, basically. And when I got there, my mindset was that this person does this all the time. So me being nervous is stupid. He sees this shit all the time. And I had a little bit of apprehension about pulling my pants down. It was like maybe 10 seconds worth of it, though, because I just felt sexy immediately. You know, I felt like, you know, I came in there like, okay, I have to be sexy. I have to be sexy. So I got in that headspace. I want to be sexy. You know, I was like, kind of uh, trying to, you know, get, I don't really know how to describe it other than just getting in the headspace of trying to feel sexy. So I honestly felt very comfortable on my first set. Um, the people are very nice. Super nice, super respectful. This guy Radius Dark was my first uh, shoot with Groovy. Um, who what? This guy Radius Dark. Radio Stark? Radius Dark. Radius Dark. That was my first scene. He was one of the directors for Groovy. Um, so I shot with him. Wonderful introduction to porn, for sure. And over the next like month or so, I got like a little bit of work here, a little bit of work there, and just slowly snowballed into a career. So. Well, but the first scene was a solo, you're saying? Two solos, yeah. What did you do exactly on the solo? I don't think I did really much of anything. I did a little striptease, jacked off, jerked off. Did it, I mean... When you jack off, you get an erection, mm -hmm. and you um, come the whole bit for sure. Yeah, uh, and you could do that on cue, no problem. I can come quite fast. Yeah, 
I've always been a quick comer, so. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly my premature ejaculation was coming in handy. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's fine. There used to be a guy in a business way back, Mark yeah. Wallace, he premature everywhere. Really? I mean, very famous guy, very good guy, yeah. but he was, anyways. <laughs> but, um, so, huh, so you jack off and then you do a boy-girl scene? The next scene, my second scene was a boy-girl scene, yeah. Just How it went well, I thought. I mean, went off without a hitch. No pain, no shit. Just some good anal. Uh -huh. uh -oh. It was pretty well received. The, um, oh yeah, with the people, they loved it. They would. Yeah, I think it was pretty well received. I mean, I got a pretty good response. I started my Twitter account the day I did my first scene, because he told me to make one. He was like, "You can't get anywhere without one." With oh what? Sorry. A Twitter. Twitter. Okay. Yeah. Um, I had no social media before that. Okay. Zero. I was so anti, you know. Mm -hmm. But I got on Twitter. You know, it's like the LinkedIn for porn people or whatever. And it was well received, and I felt kind of good about it. So, you know, I kept kept on the porn shit and got a little work here, a little work there, more and more and more, you know. Who was the first guy? What was his name? This guy, Rick Fantana. Rick Fantana? Yeah. That's a cool name. Yeah, cool dude. <laughs> Rick Fantana? <laughs> yeah. Not Fontana, but no, Fantana. Fantana. Oh, that's cool. He's a cool guy. Nice guy? Nice guy, really nice so guy. This, Class act. These, you know, because I'm not familiar, you know, you're educating me. Sure. This performer, this performer works with with boys and T.S.? There's T.S., right? There's a whole right? range of guys who, who work with T-girls. They're guys... T-girls. There are... Um, Guys who only like girls, be they T girl or otherwise. There are bisexual men who work with T girls who just like everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not one or the other. You know, there's a whole range of people. There are guys who like just femininity, whether it's like a little gay guy, a T girl, or a cute girl with a vagina. They don't give a fuck. They're just into femininity, period. There are guys who are like only into pussy. There are guys who are only into T girls. I mean, there's just such a whole a spectrum of different attractions, you know? I mean, it makes me wonder, are guys like me I become a dinosaur only in the pussy, you know? <laughs> oh, not really a dinosaur, just sort of uh, irrelevant for us T-girls because what are we going to do with you? You got nothing, nothing to offer us, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, in the future of the mindset of all people, you know what I mean? Oh, Will yeah. I become a dinosaur? Because, you know, things are changing, right? Sure, yeah. Because you're telling me examples of very complicated ideas, but not really complicated, but to me they're complicated. I uh, like petite, uh, and it looks like a girl. Sure. There's a lot of different variants. There's a whole variant on it, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I didn't really know about any of that shit either before I started performing with all these different people. You know, you learn just by hanging out with these people what people like, you know? Um... It's definitely been a learning experience, shooting porn. Very trippy. Yeah. There's actually two actors, mainstream actor, yeah. porn actors that I know, you know, that are switching or that have tried or are doing. I just had Shawn Michaels in here the other day. Shot with him many times. Right. Great um, guy. He's a great Amazing guy. Amazing guy. We go back to 1989 I'm together, sure right? You. The year I was born. Yeah. So we were <laughs> hanging out back in the day. You know, yeah. he was here like uh, two weeks ago. Right? Awesome. Well, last week, actually, yeah. whatever. But he's a wonderful guy. Wonderful and, guy. Love and, him. How'd that go? I've shot with him so many times, I don't even remember. Really? Yeah, he's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? I really respect him, too, because he just said, fuck everyone, I'm doing what I want. And he's gotten a lot of flack for it, and he still does it. He doesn't care. He's God. a strong motherfucker. He's strong. He's Real 61, strong. too. And he's still out there getting it. Yeah, he just like stayed, he stayed at my house the other day, you know, yeah. we were hanging out, re reminiscing of old times. Yeah, we grew up together. It's awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's from New York, too. I am. Right. That's we amazing. We bonded. <laughs> so, <laughs> really? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's very, a great guy. Very nice. Very good guy. Yeah. That's ironic. But yeah, um, so then there's another guy who I don't think he's really working that much, or maybe not working, but um, I know I saw him do a couple of things. It was Mark Anthony. That sounds familiar. But um, yeah. Anyways, you know, I like very, I have a lot of love for both those guys. Sure. Well, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see because I'm going to tell you, in my day, Right? That stuff was not going down. I know. You know I mean? Very taboo back in the day. Yeah, they just, there was a, a side, it was sided. You know, there was no right. such thing as T girl or TS that I right. even heard of, right? 
I heard of transvestite before. Shemale. Shemale, right? Yeah. But even those days, shemales really weren't around. No, and they it was like such a different, yeah. completely different time period. It was like. either gay movies or straight movies. Right. And crossing was very hard to do, you know, for those Still gay is. actors to come. Still is. Yeah? Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't even know. Yeah. I blame the agents. The what? The agents. Yeah? Yeah. They're the, really the only ones who put a fuss up about it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't work with so-and-so. These other people aren't gonna, never going to hire you again. Blah, 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 blah. You know. Uh-huh. I can't tell you how many times we've had straight performers want to do TS scenes, and their agents told them, no, don't do it. It's going to you get blacklisted or something. But the thing is, they're going to get blacklisted by other agents. So it's like, you know, self-fulfilling prophecy in a way. It's a big pain in my ass. My girl always says that to me. Do a self-fulfilling yeah. prophecy. <laughs> right. yeah, but, and these things happen. So, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, right? Sure. It happens. So what, are there any straight performers that you say, hey, these guys are guys I want to work with. They look good. They, you know. Sure. I mean, it's not so much specifically anyone. I just, you know, it's always good to have more people working in the trans porn pool. You know, uh-huh. it's not a huge pool of people. The guys we have, there are so many good, fantastic guys now. Like, just between when I started porn three years ago, and now the pool has exploded. We really? have so many fantastic male performers who are just absolute, you know, bombs in on camera. So how many? How many are there? I mean, even in the last couple months, there have been a whole bunch of newbies. I even for my movie that I shot for Evil Angel found this guy who absolutely rocked it. Total his first scene ever. Just a beast, an absolute beast. Um yeah, we're finding a lot of new good people out there. So well, that's really interesting. That's you yeah. know, because before Viagra, you know, and all the stuff. Sure. Performing was, is a very difficult job. Now we have Trimex for that. Trimex. The needle, the oh, silver yeah. sword. <laughs> oh yeah, it was, yeah. Um, the injection. Cabbage or something. Cabbage right? Jack, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, that's been around. I think since yeah, late nineties or something. But, but. Yeah, but, you know, natural performers, you know, they're really hard to find and sure. to do the job, you know? Sure, But I guess if you're saying a lot of people are probably doing that. Some are, some aren't. Yeah. Yeah. Some people need it more than others. Yeah. I don't give a fuck as long as it works on camera. Do what you got to do, you know? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, because it's a, it's a job. You know? Sure, exactly. It, it's a skill, too, when you don't have that Absolutely. Stuff. People don't realize how much goes into uh, performing. So if you don't have that, you the skill really comes. You'll see, I mean... It's hard to see now because it's a long, it's a gone. very distinct skill set for yeah. sure. Yeah, that was one of the um, most skillful. But um, yeah, I believe it. <laughs> but anyways, let's go back. So you, sure. you did, you, huh? Sorry. That's a sure. Yeah. yeah. So um, Rick Fantana is a cool ass name. I like it. Love him. Right. Great he, guy. Yeah, the big one. Yeah, he's got a big. He's got a fat cock. Shawn Michaels is pretty big. Yeah. So same as Shawn Michaels. Never, no, he's not a Shawn no. Michaels cock. It's <laughs> no. a nice big cock though. Okay. Could give I, him credit for yeah. sure. Yeah. Is that what you like? I'm a size queen. Size Absolutely, queen? Yeah. yeah. Absolute size queen. All right. Shawn Michaels <laughs> big enough or you like him bigger? Oh, plenty big enough, plenty yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> plenty big enough. Yeah. I'm a size queen, but I'm not, you know, that's spoiled. Jeez. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know. that's what it's called. Yeah. Well, I guess there's Mandingo next, right? Sure. But um, anyway, so that's your first scene. What, what are the other scenes? How many scenes have you done? But what are the more memorable scenes? And what are the, give me the, the, follow, the, the way it goes, you know, in line. Well, Second scene, third scene of boy girls, you know. I mean, I shot a few girl girl scenes t- with other T girls. Um, so with the equipment still there. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. then you'll um, never know the difference, obviously. Nope. Right. It's my so. first time even shooting with any other T girls. So mm-hmm. It was kind of interesting. Um, yeah, I just uh, I did a whole bunch of stuff, you know, when Trans Angels came out. It's like um, the Mind Geek trans line. It was like this huge deal. Um, that was my first big, big scene, I think. Um, oh, wh- why is it a big scene? Because it was just like a really high budget. It was like the the introduction of like really, really high budget, really high quality trans porn. Um, so like, it's huge, big, huge deal. You know, sets. everyone was like a big buzz about it. You know, big sets, big bucks, big crews. You know. Um, 
long set days and everything. Take your time. Yeah, yeah it wasn't just like one man with the cam shit. It was like a whole film crew, you know. Boy, just boy and girls, or more of an orgy, or they did it? everything. Okay. Yeah, um, they were like the quote browsers of trans porn because it's like my geek or whatever. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't really quite remember specifically the scenes I did back then. It was a long time ago, many many scenes ago. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just it's so much. <laughs> it's like really? hard to remember all of it. How yeah. many scenes have you done? I've tried to like count. I think I've done like probably around 200 in total, 200 ish in three years. So fair amount. Yeah, that's um, a lot of work. Yeah. Um, maybe more, maybe less. I don't really have a like very solid way of calculating it because I haven't been keeping track. I don't, I really haven't seen the point of keeping track of it. As long as I'm consistently getting work, I don't give a shit, you know? Um, but you have to include all the stuff I've shot myself, you know, my own content that I've done with people really brings that number up a lot. Um, more than 200. Yeah, because okay. I've shot more scenes than I can even remember in that vein. Um, well, I'm going to go into that, but I, I guess I want to, before we pass that one section, I want to think about, talk about, the tea girls together. How does that work? I mean, what it's is a big, big market for that for sure. What do you get? What do you do? One girl fucks the other, or they fuck each other. It's really whatever you want them to do. You gotta, mm -hmm. if you know what TS born, you'll know what to do. You know. Uh, okay. So pretty much this, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Some girls are top only, uh -huh. not as common, but some girls are bottom only. Uh -huh. Some are into both, and you just take whatever performance you got. And just see the chemistry, and you let it go. See whatever works, right? Exactly. Wait, how long does a scene like that usually last? Depends on the company, honestly. Okay. Anywhere from twenty minutes to forty minutes, fifty minutes. The scenes I shot for my DVD were up to an hour, so yeah, it's a whole whole range of it, you know. Yeah, pretty standard. Pretty very much. standard, yeah. Very standard. It's interesting. Yeah. So are you a um, top and a bottom? Or? I used to top for the camera, for the audience, for the money. I gave that up recently. Um, I don't enjoy it. I not. I, people think I'm good at it. I, you know, my heart's not in it when I do it, you know. Um, and I'm, you know, I want to have fun as well as make money. I don't want to be torturing myself, you know? Um, so I don't top anymore on or off camera. You gave it up. Yep. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't, if not, I don't know if everyone know, understands what a top is, but the top is the dominant person. The person one that, sticking the dick into the hole. Yeah. Does the, um, does the yeah, male, female thing. Exactly. Does the male. So, the male role or whatever you want to call it, right? Yeah. Is there any actors out there that you love the most that you want to say? Like Shawn Michaels is one of them. Love Shawn Michaels. I mean, I I'm partial to my friends. I love my friends. My friend Tony Orlando is a fantastic performer. Mm -hmm. One of my best friends. He's really an underrated performer, but yeah. he's absolutely fantastic. Big, I shoot him in all my movies. No, he, he's got a he's got a big ass dick, huge balls. Um <laughs> but it's more than just that. He really brings so passion. much more to the table. What's that? He's got passion. Passion, great actor. Um he's funny. Um he just he's a, the full package. Um good so, looking guy too. Great looking dude. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's a really fantastic guy. Spanish? That's a Spanish name. No, he's, he's not Spanish. He's a white uh, guy. Uh, he looks kind of like me. He's got like the dark hair, the pale skin. Okay. Um but he's fantastic. Yeah, I really like him. Um, I mean, that's what comes to your mind. So that's the, that's, that's definitely he's great. Um, my friend Aubrey and my friend Natalie are fantastic too. Aubrey, is Aubrey it? Kate, Natalie Mars. I heard about her. Right? Yeah. yeah, they're they're fantastic performers. They're really good friends of mine. Again, I'm very partial to my friends because I work with them a lot and I see them in action more than everyone else. And they are great. Um, and yeah, you know. Um, you hang out with them a lot? Yeah. Well, I'm sort of a recluse. I hang out with them, like, right. as much as I hang out with any of my best friends. So it's like, I sort of like kind of a homebody. That's your porn posse if, if you're hanging yeah, out. Yeah, for sure. I was huh. just in London with Aubrey Kate for a full 20 days. So. Oh, what was that about? Um, we just went out there for 
shits and giggles. <laughs> the US Open. I saw that. We, yeah, we went to the US Open together. That was well, we did New York first, and then London. And we were gone for like twenty five days total. I think. Was a bomb. Was a blast. It's fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah definitely a, one of the best times ever. Really? For cool. sure. Yeah. It was Fish really and great. chips. You better believe it. Bomb, right? <laughs> I was there. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, did you uh, make me see, hungry? All around London, you went, or did you go any place I else? I walked all the fuck over London. I went everywhere skateboard? on foot. I did. I was going to skateboard there, but truthfully, I had a shin injury, and I was letting that heal. I didn't want to like fuck it up. I wanted to come back from my vacation with a nice, clean-looking shin. So I took a little break from it, let my body recover. You know, glad I did, Tim. But it would have been fun for sure, huh. no doubt. Where else <laughs> do you want to go? I want to go to Iceland really bad. For some fucked up reason, I want to go to Nova Scotia. Like, it's like in oh, hold on. I'll let you know. The very famous porno star that was here the other day. Yeah. Uh, Peter North. Yeah. He's from Nova Scotia. Oh, cool. Have you heard of him? Yeah. Yeah, so he yeah. was here. Yeah, he was from Nova Scotia. Cool. Anyways. Uh, I want to go there. Because it's a beach town or because or I, water? I want to go to Nova Scotia because I know nothing about it. And I don't know anyone who's been there. And I don't know. I've never heard any hype about it being like a vacation spot. It's just very random, to be honest. I just, it's sort of a mystery to me. And I want to just, it's close enough that I feel like I could just go right there and yeah. fuck around and just see what it's all about, you know? Maybe yeah. there's a connection somehow, right? Calling your name. Something's calling me. Yeah. yeah I really want to go for some reason. I really want to go to Iceland. Um, what else? I want to go to Japan at some point. I've never been to any Asian countries. So. Why do you want to go to Japan? Just curious. I'm fascinated by it. The pictures I see of it, the culture, the, just everything I've ever seen. My friend Natalie went there recently. She loved it. The pictures I saw um, that she took were really cool. Um, and frankly, I just want to experience something different. So what better way to do that than going halfway around the world to an Asian country? You know. Oh, yeah. oh. Um, I know now what you told me earlier. So you told me earlier that some people think that you're Asian looking sometimes. Yes. But you want to know why. I figured it out right now. Why is that? Because... The way your haircut, the way your makeup is, you have a geisha look a little bit. Really? Yeah. So it's, it. It. I've actually been told that before. It's the makeup. Yeah. Right. But the hair too. Totally unintentional. Yeah. Totally unintentional. Yeah. But the way you do it, so I see what they're saying. A I get bit. it. Yeah. So that's Jap Japan geisha. Maybe yeah. that's calling me too. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I was in Asia, you know, so I think that uh, Thailand is a cool place to go. I want to go there too. It looks really pretty. Yeah. yeah. They have a lot of things to do. Cool. Yeah. Beaches and great surgeons. Yeah, yeah, and they do a lot of there's a lot of tea. There's tea a lot of like lady boy porn yeah, out there. Were, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's very popular out there. Yeah, the guy that flew me there in 1991, he was a uh, did a lot of that porn too back then. Yeah, John Bowen was his name. Oh, I heard the name. Yeah, of course. Really? Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. Really? Yeah. Wow. He was John Spring Chicken, but I I recognize you know people. John T Bone. <laughs> yep. I love that guy. I'm just awesome. wondering if he's still alive because he was older then. So, mm. Bowen, I've said it earlier. We said it with Shawn Michaels because we all grew up with. Yeah. Bowen directed us as actors. Call me, man. <laughs> What's up? I miss you. If you're still alive, I mean, he might be 85, 90. Anyways, I, I like still fucking lady boys. I don't know if it, I don't know if that was his thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't yeah. know, but he was shot. He was a sure. hustler. You know. Yeah. He's from London. Cool. Very cool. So, um, what is the favorite part of your body? My butt. What? Yeah, I'm very proud of it. Yeah, very proud right. of the work I've done, yep. <laughs> I mean, you were a skateboarder, so you have a physical... The skating helps with the butt. Uh -huh. I do work out outside of skateboarding as well, which helps. I think a little bit of genetics helps as well. Uh -huh. um, a lot of the ladies in my family got some big butts as well, so... I'm very proud of my butt. <laughs> Us white girls aren't quite blessed usually with those. So. Oh, it's with nice, the buds, yeah. nice but exception. I don't know. You know, if I've been all around the world, sure. see, what I see generally is for just genetics, regardless period, of race, hmm. is that if you exercise hmm. one way or another with using your legs, you can get a butt. Anyone can get a butt if they yeah. want one, for sure. You, know, you can get one. It's so, easier for some people than others, though. <laughs> yeah. But I believe it. I see a lot of big white butts in Europe. Sure. I, a lot of movies in Europe, but, you I know, believe it. It's a trip. We were yeah. in South America a lot. They climb up the stairs. 
because they a lot of poor people live in this, mm. you know, up in the end of the city in right. the mountains, right? They climb up these stairs all over from Venezuela to Brazil to Colombia, right? And that gets their legs strong because they got to carry their groceries, so they uh, all have butts. I hear that. And the people that aren't doing it, they got no butts. Definitely. Yeah. Well, skateboarding really contributes to, like, your core muscles, your abs, your legs, your butt, yeah. whole lower half of your body pretty much. The trip, right, yeah. It's great. So, so I wonder, it genetically, it makes me wonder, did, you know, did the people that don't have the butts or the strong legs as much as before, did they start getting lazier over the generations of families? Maybe, you know yeah, I mean? that's because, interesting thought. No. I think um, butts are a little more in these days than they were a long time ago. They're way more in. Yeah, it yeah. used to be all about the titties in the 90s, I heard. Titties mm. in, oh, well. in the 80s and 90s, all with hooters and everything, you know? Yeah, I don't know, they're like... Yeah. <laughs> we're living in an ass man's world now. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I never cared about the tits, I always liked the butts, even when I was a kid. The girl's butt. I, I like, can empathize. Huh? Yeah. Do you, I mean, what do you appreciate about a, a girl or a boy? What do you like with those parts? I'm actually, um, I mean, I like eating ass. I like eating ass. So oh, it's eating like, ass. Okay. But only w girls' butts. I'm not oh. really into guys' butts. Um, oh. So, yeah. like a, so you like girls? I, it's really hard for me to explain this because I'm, I'm not even sure how I feel about it. I would never date a woman. I'm not into courting them, um, but when I'm on set, I can have a good, good old time with them for sure. You know what I mean? Really, genuinely fun, hot time. And I just think girls' butts are a little more aesthetically pleasing. They're usually less hairy, um, usually more well maintained. You know what I mean? So it's like objectively, regardless of any sexuality, they're just to me look nicer. So it's like. I can enjoy that, you know, but I'm not, I don't see girls in the street and go, hmm, look at that fucking yeah. ass over there. Yeah, you know, it's like not, yeah. I don't know, but on set, you know, it's like totally different head space for me. Uh -huh. um, so you work with them in scenes? Then? Absolutely. Yeah. I did oh, yeah. a scene with one two days ago. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I don't mind what's, it. What's her name? <laughs> oh shit. Who did I shoot with? Fuck. Her name was, um, Chanel Preston. Yeah, is super any, hot, super yeah. hot, yeah. Blonde, Spiegler girl. Brunette, Spiegler? Brunette, yeah. yeah Spiegler's a real, he's a very good agent. I don't really care for agents, really. Oh, yeah. But. So, yeah, you have no agents? <laughs> no, TS girls don't have agents. No? I think one girl had one, oh. kind of got her foot in the door, but you don't need them in TS porn. Once no? you know, I mean, there's such a small range uh -huh. of directors, it's like everyone knows everybody. It's okay. much easier for them to just call you, text you, you uh -huh. know. Jim Powers text me you know the other day or yesterday actually you know what do I need an agent to be a middleman for that you know uh -huh. it's like stupid so, so how many TS girls are there out there really working? more and more every day it seems yeah. like yeah they keep coming so it's really burgeoning industry for sure there you go so uh, you <laughs> might want to be an agent who well, is somebody might want right to be some one. people are actually hopping on there uh -huh. um I've seen a few girls you know taking in younger T girls under their wing and kind of shopping them around and stuff. So we'll see what happens. I forgot to bring up another yeah. guy that was a TS. He didn't perform, but he was such a, a big maker of TS movies in my generation and before my generation. He was an actor. We worked together, you know, forever. And you might have heard of him, Joey Silvera. Oh, I love Joey. <laughs> One of my favorites ever to work with. He's great, right? One of my first ever scenes. Uh, yeah. One of my first ever sets of scenes. Yeah, he got me really early. Really learned a lot. He's uh, shown me a lot about cameras and lenses and stuff, too. We yeah, talked really? about gear a lot. Yeah. Nice he's he's great. He's actually um, from a town really close to where I went to high school. New York, so yeah. kind of bonded over that, yeah. Really? Yeah. What's, what town's that? Um, Glens Falls. I think it was, he said Glens Falls or Saratoga. Uh -huh. One of the towns a little bit north of Albany. Um Right near where I went to high school. So. Oh, he's a cool guy. Really cool guy. Amazing guy. We did probably at least 100 or 200 movies on the same set. I believe least. it. Yeah, he's fantastic. He was a really good performer, too. I've heard. What's up, Joey? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joey's great. So what, the rates, you know, what was your, I mean, you're homeless, so porn has done a, so much for you right now, right? Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable, right? Sea change. So what 
how much did you get paid your first scene, the first single, right? Because it was single, and then you know the boy girl, and then now, what are the? How does it look? How does it rise? Well, it's different in in TS porn. It's like certain companies have an allotted budget, and they'll pay you it. You don't want the scene; they'll just say walk. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Those companies also don't make you hang around on set eight hours. You're in and out in two to three hours. You know? That's the best, huh? So if they want to pay me, I got paid my first boy girl was I think eight hundred. Um, and was there a few hours, you know, I wasn't there reading dialogue for three hours. I wasn't out in the hot sun shooting B roll. It's wham bam thank you ma'am out the door. You got your eight hundred. Other companies pay you a thousand and sort of similar. It's a little bit shorter than like a full day on like a transfixed or a trans angel set. For the bigger companies, that's when I uh, name my rate, you know? Um, I had the same rate of 1200 for like my whole career pretty much for the bigger companies. And in the last year or so, I upped it to 15. Um, 14 for certain people who I'm just they give me the work all the time so I'm just like you know um but then certain companies if I'm gonna be there eight to ten hours sometimes longer yes I'll ask for my 15 um and you know I always give 110 percent when they pay my rate because I'm not gonna ask for my rate and show up late with no wardrobe and not know any of my lines you know I like to think that I'm worth my rate you know, um, and I do everything I can to prove that to them because I'm fair. If I'm paying somebody's right, I want the same thing back from them, you know? So it just depends on the company and who I'm shooting for. Hmm, that's cool. Have you saved a lot of money? Yeah. I blew a lot of it too on this last movie I did, but you know, I ended up having to buy a lot more gear than I thought I would need. Um, but no, I'm pretty good with my money. No, because I mean, I appreciate a porno myself because I mean, I, got, I made so much money. It was just a dream come true. That's it, right? Sex and yeah. drugs and rock and roll. Definitely. Kind of, right? Yeah. But, you know, you want to save your money. So, you know, you just, it's, I don't know. I guess I'm just saying, yeah, did you save a lot of them? Here we go. There's Sean. <laughs> Dre. What's up, my brother? <laughs> what are you up to, man? I said, what are you up to? I'm here on my podcast, and I have somebody here that wants to say hi to you. She worked with you. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so she's going to say hello. Go ahead. Say hello. Hi, Sean. It's Lena Kelly. Hi, baby. How are you? I'm doing amazing. Having a fantastic time over here. TT. <laughs> you know, this is, uh, this is like coming full circle here. Cause it you is. Know, what am I, what am I First and true, true, like, you know, like, down, down, friends, still is. And he was telling me that. Serious co-worker. <laughs> just so many, so many places we've been. Man. In this world, baby, that, you know, and then <laughs> come back and then look what, look where we're talking to you. And, you That's know, right. and uh, talking about my new career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were talking about it. How Nothing but nice things. I've been amazing. Just okay. staying busy, yeah. doing my little thing. My movie's coming out soon, so. Okay, good, yeah. We have to get together again soon. Yes, I told him about our failed POV that we shot. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, so, you know, we, we, we need to, yeah, we need to get back on some Reshoot stuff, that thing, exactly. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah, <laughs> it's, all, it's all like, we were talking, I was talking to TT not too long ago about being in a comfort zone, you know what I mean? Mm. And sometimes, you know, I mean, we're just humans. Sometimes it's just, it's, it's there for us. And for the guys who are still there and the women that are still there, I mean, you know, it's obviously, you know, it's a really a mental, uh, it takes a strong mental capacity to do this the way we do it and enjoy it the way we enjoy Absolutely. it. Absolutely. It's a learn, um, learn you thing. Know, it's, all, it's all about, I always like to think it's about the chemistry and, you know, we always... We always have that. We always have great chemistry. You know, I have that. <laughs> I, have, I try to create that too with most of my partners. You well, you're know, fantastic at it. Doing, doing, doing scenes together. So I think that's an important factor. So you know? important. Yeah. yeah she, said, like, she said you're unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
well, you know what? I, I'm only as good as my partner, really. <laughs> and, um, you know, for, for, for a fact, too, Phil, I mean, you get a, you have a good partner. You know, you can work with that part, person over and over again. And it's, you know, it's it's like, yeah, you know, it's like a date. So, you know, because you know it gets better each time. And it's it's what it's supposed to be, you know? Yeah, for sure. We, we're performers, but, you know, like... Like Hollywood performers, you know, we, we, we have to do a believable job. And that's, again, one of the most important things about the sex the sex industry and sex workers. There's really no faking it. You know, either you're having a good time and it shows or you're not. You know what I mean? And, and that's it. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But, hey, man, you know, I'm, I'm so glad to talk to both of you guys at the same time. There's a little <laughs> history going on here. So thank you. All right, Dre, thanks for calling. I'll hit you up. Bye, Sean. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. God love him. (laughs) Boy from way back. I believe him. We we worked, and we did a lot of work together. We went to Costa Rica, to Europe. Oh, cool. Very cool. All over the place. Yeah. When time flies, really trip, you'll see, boom, it's gone. (laughs) It's very crazy. But uh, anyway. like this, huh? But he's very, very professional. Very, good. very professional. Very good. Yeah. Very upstanding I mean, guy. I mean, he's a real performer too. Yes, he is. A natural. Natural. Quintessential. A natural. natural. We came up in the days there was no bag or no nothing. Right. So either you performed or you're gone. So Dre is a real true performer. He's performed now for thirty years, over thirty years. That's right. And that is My unbelievable. Old life. <laughs> Come on, over thirty he's years. He's legend. He's legend. My hat goes off, Dre. Exactly. I bowed out quick of my own company and said. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I probably could do it, but, you know, sure. I didn't. You know what I mean? So, I Dre's great. It. Anyway, so, um, as, I'm glad he called. Yeah, so me too. <gasps> Is there any misconceptions you want to bring out that people have with TS girls? T girls, I don't want to make yeah, sure I say it right. there's a bunch of them. A really big one is that we love our cocks and want to get them sucked all the time. Or we want to fuck ass and treat you like a slave. It's, like, totally not like that. Just because we have them doesn't mean we're jazzed up about using them. A lot of us just want to be like regular women, you know, and be treated like regular women. I mean, why transition, you know? You're not going to want to be... It's like, it's a huge misconception. I'm constantly, constantly getting DMs. I want you to make me your bitch, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I'm not into it. Sorry. Would, would that be more of a transvestite doing that? No, not at all. I mean, some girls are into doing that. But oh, okay. it's not all of us, you know. Um, and I have complete respect for the girls who are into that. Who am I to say what you should like or not? But for mm-hmm. me and a lot of girls, it's like, you know, very tiring having the focus always being on the cock, you know. Um, a lot of us just want to be seen for our full woman self, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's like very easy to make the cock the focus because it's like a very distinct feature of T-Girls, obviously, but um, a lot of us just want to be treated and screwed like normal girls, so yeah. big misconception there, for sure. I mean, I totally get that feeling from you. You just want to be treated like a girl, and that's all I want. It would be it nice seems to a very easy, yeah. standard thing, you know? I don't want any special treatment, like I said. I don't want, I don't want really anything other than to just blend right in, you know? So... Is there any ways you think that society could help the LGBT community with blending in? or is there any- Yeah, I think we just stop making such a big deal about transgender shit. Um, stop separating us from the normal crowd of people. You know, we're not on a team. We don't need a fucking flag. It's like, we should just be there and mm. just invisible, you know? I know it's easier said than done, but... It gets very tiring, people dividing everyone up into teams, LGBTQ, pride flag. It's just like, let's just all be one human race and not be in these little tribes. You know what I mean? Um, It's very exhausting, and I just avoid it like the plague. I love that. That's a great way to put it, because I wonder why are they saying, why are the people got to have their own tribe, like you're saying? Why they... This, that, this. I'm it like, just sows discord and yeah. makes people, you know, dislike each other. And having teams makes it so their people are put up against each other. And just, you, know. you ever hear about the rat experiment? Maybe. Well, they took all the rats. First, they took one rat. They put it in a cage. 
they you know watched it and then they put two rats in there and they were friends and then they put three rats in and they started separating they had levels you know three mm. levels Higher four, key. yeah four rats and then the different colored rats and they started hanging out with each the same color and then they started more rats they started making gangs Wow, so it's a very started, natural, innate thing for they, us to divide ourselves up into these little groups, huh? And then they start killing each other. When oh, they put more in, right? Wow. Is that a trip? That's the way of the world, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right. So there's, but I think we're smart enough that we could figure a way to kind of break out of that. I think we just kind of let our base instincts get the best of us a lot. I hope so, right? Especially with social media, a lot of uh, <laughs> shit kind of swirls and snowballs into yeah. More than it needs to be, for sure. I, I love to bring up that part right there, social media, because oh God. they can hit, they can get to you now. Before in my day, they can't get to you. I'm mysterious. You can't find me, can't understand me. And but No, you can just send letters to somebody back in the day, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, if you're lucky. <laughs> yeah, but how, if you're lucky. Where? You don't have an address. <laughs> exactly. So, but now they can get a hold of you. They can send you great messages. And you're, we're going to go into it in a second, you're directing. But they, you know, they can send you good, bad, the ugly, all of it. But how do you feel about social media? I think it's very toxic. I think it's very useful in certain ways. Um, in general, I think it's a force for bad. Um, it's a what? Not a force for good. Not a force? Oh, yeah. yeah. I think it brings out the worst in people. I think it's like a, a very exaggerated form of road rage, how you're safe in your little bubble, therefore you can scream your head off at people. Um I think that's very bad. I think it um, it highlights shit we don't need to see. Sort of like a, a media thing where it's like, um, it makes things that we shouldn't give a shit about very significant, brings it to the front of the like agenda, kind of. I think it just, it's like a big distortion on reality honestly just i don't know i just don't think it's a force for good i'm on there for my work shit i complain a lot about my life on twitter too just very therapeutic but i just don't i just think it brings out the worst in people and it also all of those bad actors on there get way too much attention they're way too visible um, and the more extreme and the more ridiculous and horrible you are, the more attention you get. So it's like, you know, that whole thing with the people, I don't know whether it was spitting on food in the supermarkets or something, or it just brings out the absolute worst base instincts in people. I think anyway, I don't, can't think of anything that great that it does. Maybe it brings certain issues like environmental issues to the forefront, but a lot of people just sit around complaining about it and feel like they're doing something about it. So at the same time, maybe not, you know. Have you ever heard that saying that familiarity breeds contempt? Yes, I have heard that before, and I didn't quite understand it, to be honest. I would say, <laughs> <laughs> there's the contempt in social media, huh? Oh, I know. There's so much vitriol and malicious people, and it brings the worst voices to the top of the, the heap, and it just, you know can't be good for us psychologically to be just fed all of this negativity all the time is, is, how many hearts does it break every day <sighs> I'm and spiritually countless you know? i know i feel my soul being worn down sometimes by social media so oh, it's just, yeah it, i don't think i wish people would understand more it's like why abuse somebody because you can and they always talk about oh no bullying well okay maybe physically bullying somebody is what you're against, but now you're mentally bullying everybody. Which is, in a way, quite hypocrisy. just as harmful, you know? It's hypocrisy. Yeah, and I, I have people harassing me all the time on social media, talking shit to me, you know, just calling me names. Like what? Tell me some crazy, and if, you know, unless it's too painful. I don't want to bring up any specifics because I don't want to give them the satisfaction, but I'm constantly harassed on social media by people who just, I don't do anything and go out of my way to hurt anyone's feelings. I'm not malicious. I don't talk shit on anybody. But for some reason, just me existing and doing what I do invites complete strangers to hate on me. So, and let's say this to the people who, who are like that. that: 
Why don't you mind your own business? That's what I say. I'm like, what? you don't have anything going on in your own life. You got to just sit here and post malicious shit to a stranger. You don't even know. Not affecting your life in any way. There's, you know, there's people out there that are killing people. Exactly. If you feel bold and, you know, worth something, worthy of something, then go attack them. Right. Exactly. Uh, Do something we, useful. I don't know. Yeah. Get a job, maybe. <laughs> she, she's making uh, beautiful porn for people to enjoy. And I believe, you know, beautiful porn, not, you know, uh, aggressive, not crazy porn that doesn't sure. make sense, but just, be- you know, sex, beautiful porn is good for the human spirit. Everyone jacks off yeah. almost. It's so. relief. It's a big deal. And I'm sure it keeps a lot of like, you know, maybe sexually perverted people okay. in the comfort of their own home, getting their needs taken care of, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. People so, yeah. need love. They need to... The, Let's steam off. They need love. They don't need bullshit. Yeah, and I find it absolutely atrocious when companies or people, you know, hate on porn stars or porn companies because you know they're jacking you off to it on their own time. It's like just so blatantly hip- hypocritical. I cannot take it. I mean, you're born in 89, but I was in the business in 89. Mm-hmm. And so if you've seen what I've seen the girls go through, in the earlier days. I mean, Janet Jameson made porn acceptable for women to do, to do it, really, mm. you know, back in the day. And we were very good friends, you know. And But before Jenna, the people, the girls, you know, they make their money, they go do movies, but the next-door neighbor would see them. Obviously, they're watching them, but they're going to ridicule them and try to destroy them. Oh! point finger it's like having a scarlet letter or something right. on you but right. you know so you, it's like today it's, a, it's different but yeah you know, a little bit very, different. but still, still there's a lot of hate out there right. for sure so, but it's very a bullshit artists, you know all yeah. the all the beauty that porn does I, people can think oh i'm christian I'm this and that no Mm-mm. you're mistaken exactly keep your mind open think about the good i think killing people for no reason I know, where's all the complaints about that, right? Yeah, the the military and all that. I know, let's complain about people fucking though, right? Yeah. (laughs) Well, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because you know why? Because maybe they don't want the joy and happiness out there. Some people can't stand to see other people happy. Misery loves its company, right? Yeah, I mean, (laughs) what what that book, you know, I keep referring back to this book in my podcast. I'll do it again. Yeah. Okay, from what I understand, the Da Vinci Code book, it was the union of two people, is the highest form of life. Did you understand that? I haven't read that book in okay. like 15 years, maybe. Well, I didn't read it, but the, the movie yeah. kind of was stayed oh, in that movie, yeah. with Tom Hanks. But, you know, and I, I believe it, though, for you know, sure. Like yeah. two people. What's more you, beautiful? You love right? each other, right? You got that passion and that hunger. Mm. <laughs> you exactly. lock it in, right? And you both, you know, mutually are, are at the same level. Yeah. And orgasm together. I mean, what is, you know, what's better than that? Yeah. Money's not better than that. That's right. the best, you know? Good food is close, but, you know. Mm-hmm. But tell me about this, okay? So orgasming on camera, you have to orgasm. I do. So you, is it easy or is it hard? For me, it's very easy. Like I said, it takes me, I can go from a soft dick to a full-on orgasm in like a minute and 30 seconds. Wow, really? Yeah, I've had to do it under pressure, too. Like, location, not having mm-hmm. the time for it uh-oh like let's wow. get this going here that makes but you a strong asset i think so yeah my cum load is very small though since i had my balls out but i still do and i get the job done so there's secrets to that is that mm-hmm. are there you have mm-hmm. to tell me about those okay <laughs> <laughs> all right so um yeah, we already talked about the boyfriend, so no boyfriend. So later on, you're gonna have relationships. I see. To me, you seem like a personal person, and you seem like you you have love in your heart. Yeah, me. I've just been really focused on my career, so yeah. I just yeah. Yeah, tell me about that. So now you are transitioning to directing. I am. Well, I wouldn't call it transitioning. I'm just adding it into my repertoire, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Um, because I like I said, I'm really into camera stuff, and I'm really. I'm just a creative person, and it's a fantastic creative outlet for me because I get to write scripts, I get to shoot video, I get to pick out wardrobe, I get to dress all the girls up all cute the way I like it, I get to design the DVD cover. I mean, 
the list goes on and on. It's like a perfect fit for me. I absolutely love it. What kind of movie are you directing? Well, I just shot my first big DVD for Evil Angel, and are, are you? So you're a part of Evil Angel now. I directed a movie for them, and depending on how it is okay. received, we'll see what happens in the future. But um, it's a it great, was, great. I, sorry but, to break you up. But yeah. that's a great company. I agree. I mean, I could have shot my talents anywhere, and I picked them because I thought it was a great fit. And I thought my movie would fit right in. And I really think it does. I'm really proud of how it came out. Um, for our first movie, there wasn't a single issue. Definitely a lot of, um, I'd overcome a lot of technical humps that I didn't foresee, but I overcame every single one of them with flying colors. And the content came out great. It looks great. The color is great. Sounds great. The sex is great. It came out exactly how I wanted it to come out. Um, and it's unlike any other TS porn shot right now because it's shot with two cameras that are very, very nice, but nobody else uses. What it's, kind of cameras are they're those? They're Canon XF705s. Um, everyone uses like the C300, the C200, which looks great. Um, but there's very, I don't know, the way it looks is very distinct. Um, and we shot at two angles and we shot it my way. And it, it's a unique specimen, I think. It's, I think it's really, really unique. Um, does it have, movie. does it have, any, yeah, well, tell me the name so we can pump it up. What's the name? It's called Trans Nasty. Okay. Um, which is just a title I came up with. I originally was going to do my first movie for them. I was going to do like a cult, sex cult theme thing. Make it very themey. Make it very specific. But I was talking with somebody and he suggested I go a little more universal with it, attract a bigger crowd for your first movie, you know? So I decided instead of doing my usual thing where I write scripts and make it very themed, I will make it more about just about the visuals, just about the sex, small little plot line or whatever for each scene, but I wanted it to be all about the way it looked and I wanted it to be all about the sex itself. And I wanted that to be able to carry the movie. Um, so it's very, very specific in the way the graphic design is. I have a very specific aesthetic that I adhere to for all my shit. Um, it's got a retro kind of vibe to it, for sure. Um, what type of retro? It's got this Vogue, mag 80s, 90s Vogue magazine kind of look to it. It's very glamorous. It's got, I literally lifted some of the fonts from Vogue magazine and like did renditions on them. Um, I mean, those are the days of, I mean, the early 80s were the supermodel days. Yes, well, that's them. kind of what I had in mind. It's got a very supermodel-y, like... Um, Cindy Crawford. It's got the Paulina. look, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know those girls? Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, um, Paulina, Naomi, Cindy Crawford, uh Kate Moss is in the 90s, but she's yeah. almost part of that neighborhood. It's got this really bright 80s kind of thing yeah. going to it. I had music custom made for the movie. had a commission. Really? Um, Did anybody special make it that you know? This guy, Matro. Yeah. Um, what type of music is it? It's it's what it sounds like, a fashion show, kind of 80s fashion, 90s fashion show vibe. Like very like high fashion, um, very clean, upbeat, electronic um, techno a little bit? Mm, sort of, but it's not really... If you can imagine, like, runway music, kind of. Very, very... You have to hear it. It's a very, very unique movie, for sure. Um, and I kind of based it off... I used to love getting these old Vogue magazines in the 80s and 90s, and I based the entire aesthetic on that, pretty much. Cool. And it just came out really, really... I'm really, really happy with it, so... It's out on DVD, October 23rd, and... Online, that'll be online too? It's actually already out online right now. Oh, cool. Um, we self-launched it, and we're going to start the real promotion around when the DVD drops, so... Uh, is self-launched with Evil Angel? Soft launch. Soft on launch. On Evil Angel, on yeah. The, so we com. quietly released it digitally okay. on Evil Angel, okay. and near to when the DVD comes out, we're going to do a big push and really get it promoted the way it deserves, you know? Cool. How excited yeah. are you? 
head over heels excited. Huh? I cannot wait for this thing to drop. So, did you put some of your friends in the movie? I put all my friends in the movie. Which ones? Uh, it's Aubrey Kate, Natalie Mars. Oh. I'm in the movie. I've seen it. Um, Goth Charlotte, Charlotte's Arter, and this girl Chloe K. Cool. Yeah. Any? Is there guys in there too? Lots of guys. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I've got a new guy. This guy Logan. Uh-huh. His first scene ever. Totally destroyed it. Um, this guy Michael Del Rey and this guy King Epicleus DP'd me for one scene. Do you, how is that? How do they do that? I've got two holes. <laughs> okay. oh. One up here and one down there. How's oh, so, okay. And one that takes two at once. So. Oh, okay. And then I've oh, got. You're a little kinky. So a, a lot. Is the movie kinky. dirty? It's filthy as fuck. Okay. <laughs> Basically, it's trans nasty, so I really wanted to adhere to the title. Oh, um, okay. And like, like I said, it's like no other TS porn. Um, my scene, I had to cut 20 minutes out of it because it wouldn't meet the regulations for the obscenity laws. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, gonna, it's a seriously nasty movie. You're um, naughty girl, huh? Yes. <laughs> along with everyone else in the movie, I picked the nastiest girls I know. So. Cool. And it's definitely one of a kind yeah. well, movie. Everybody's got to go watch that. I agree. It's... um. Really, I'm really proud of how it came out. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, your first, my first movie, I, I just did it. That wasn't, you yeah, know, all technical on it. Well, I've directed a few things before, but not in any sort of grand, high budget capacity or anything. So, uh-huh. oh, really? So, I had experience, oh, cool. you know, directing and shooting stuff. How many but did you direct? I don't know, maybe six or seven scenes. Oh, wait, no, 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 more than that, like eight or nine, because uh-huh. I did a whole a DVD before that. That still hasn't come out yet. I don't know what, really what's up with it, but... I mean, you said Joey gave you a couple pointers? Yeah. Because he's very, very I good. gained him because I know exactly he's got such great knowledge about this stuff. and About everything. Who better to ask, you know? And I really um, I'm very inspired by his, his work as well, you know? Yeah, I mean, so all the people you've worked, directors, that's a lot yeah. of 200 scenes or whatever you've done, yeah. right? Yeah. Who do you think was the most talented director that you worked with? I would say Joey, honestly. He's just, even like the dynamic of the onset interaction, you know what I mean? Um, I'm a huge fan of how bright and colorful everything is. It was very inspiring for me. The way Joey makes it? Yeah, because I'm really into like um, cartoony shit. In general, I've always been that way. I grew up cartooning, drawing, and stuff. Um, I always loved comic books and everything, and I just really thought his stuff was very beautiful. Um, and it wasn't just beautiful, though. The sex was also great and very nasty and f- drenched in fluids and stuff. And wow. very inspired by that. Very inspired by Jim Powers just to the energy he brings on set, you know. He's great. Yeah, he really inspired me in terms of just keeping everyone happy and the way, just the whole the way the whole shit is run, you know. Um, and a bunch of other directors as well, you know. I take little things from all sorts of directors, and along the way, as I've been performing, I've been secretly, you know, taking notes of everyone's philosophies and methods and looking at the gear they use and the lights they use and just really apply that to this movie. Well, that's really yeah. great because you, know, you have to understand, porn has gone up and down, you know, in, in technical facets. And now a lot of people are going for making a very technical lighting so perfect, so nice. So it really is I tried not to go too far down that road because I find mm-hmm. a lot of it is too artistic and less about yeah. the sex. And it loses some of the nasty raunchiness to it because you're so focused on the artistic element. And the spontaneity gets Yes. Lost. When you're on set for eight hours, you're a bit tired to fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah. We get to fucking within like an hour or two of starting. So yeah. everyone's, you know, really yeah. on their game. Uh, I've had scenes last nine hours before. I have been on set for 14, so. <laughs> but during a scene, nine hours of sex. Oh, my God. I couldn't uh, even imagine. I've had been on sets for 22 hours, but nine yeah. hours because the guy sucked and we're shooting film for oh, some Italians. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. And they want to be perfect, and I'm, I'm always strong, so I'm waiting nine hours. Not a good look. Is there anything that you, you know, that you could think of that you might be interested for the people? Well, I really wanted to talk about my DVD, so that was my, uh, the yeah. one thing I really wanted to talk about, yeah. So we got that, yeah. Yeah, we got I'm it. Here. I'm happy you came, and I'm here for, awesome. you know, 
for anybody. This is not one of those weird podcasts. This is straight up, you know, trying to understand the person. That's why I think it's important. I've had a good time. Yeah. Really yeah. got a lot out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to ask this. So what's the biggest penis you've seen? Show it to me. And <sighs> Big penis. No joke, like that big. But that's close to Shawn Michaels. Bigger than Shawn's. Yeah. Bigger than Shawn's, yeah. Shawn's like here. Uh, so 12 inches, 13 inches? 13, 14, and like f- fucking fat. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you like that? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they're saying it against you, the size queen. One of those I could barely get my mouth around. I was like, Oh, yeah. You know, you loved it. <laughs> Fucking loved it. Yeah. Oh, I, I wasn't that big, so. <laughs> you don't need to be necessarily, but it's fun sometimes to get with those oh, crazy monster BBCs. Yeah. You know? Oh, so it was a black guy. Yeah. So yeah. So who you like? Is there any race you like working with more than others? No. Huh? I don't partially any of them. Yeah. If you got a big old dick and you perform well and you're nice to me, I'm all set. Equal opportunist. Equal opportunity. Exactly. Uh, it's politically good. correct dick sucker <laughs> <laughs> so uh, okay so help me if you can I I guess I'm slowly understanding what's the difference between the transvestite just a guy who dresses up like a I girl I think so I'm actually not entirely sure on the terminology there okay. I'm pretty sure the transvestite's like a, a cross dresser maybe it's a cross dresser yeah so anybody dresses up in girls clothes is tra- transvestite you think yeah a so guy yeah. is if they're getting like a kink from it or something yeah okay but don't take my word for it i'm honestly not completely versed on like the difference between like the very fine nuances of these words but uh-huh. i just know that transgender and transsexual is like what i am the tea awards yeah i've heard about i mean um, tell me about that i like them more than any of the other awards because they actually spend a lot of time and know the industry whereas like avian and xbiz kind of the award sometimes can seem like a, a little arbitrary or like a bit of a just a favor. The T uh, show, uh, bit of a favor. Oh, for like, it. yeah, I got you. Just because they don't really have their hands, they're not down in the trenches with us in the the, the industry. You know, mm-hmm. the T show is like run by people who are in TS porn. You know, mm-hmm. they really know the industry. Um, they're much more up on who's done what and what movies came out and. I think they just care. I know they just care a lot more about TS women, obviously, because it's a show about us. You know, yeah. Avian and Xbiz, you go there and they've got a 10 minute segment about trans shit, and then they don't even put it on the Showtime TV. Mm-hmm. They cut it out. So it's like the priorities are much, much different between the two. Yeah, so no, I get I love the T show. It's a great time. It's really fun. Everyone's really awesome. And it's just a good old time, and it's a great time to celebrate trans perform performers you know it's like a real celebration of us you know so yeah well, to me it seems like the beginning of an avn or you know it's just starting right oh it's been around for a while two or three five how long more than that i mean you speak all the training awards like huh? i'm not sure exactly how long it's been around but it's been around for like i don't know maybe 10 to 12 years or something maybe longer okay. um it's just we haven't been really that noticed until recently because trans porn is really on the up and up now before it was kind of like a little more taboo, a little more niche. Now it's much more mainstream. So people are starting to notice us a little more. I mean, Bruce Jenner, he's a tea girl, right? I don't know what the fuck that person is. Yeah. No, okay. I think he's a horrible representation of, really? of trans women, honestly. Um, yeah, I just don't really don't approve of somebody just getting up and appointing themselves the spokesperson of trans people, you know? Um, everyone's got their own lived experience and I don't doubt that they are transgender. Um, I called him he a second ago cause you just did and it was sort of like a reaction, but I'm more than happy to refer to her as a woman, obviously. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, but you know, I just, I don't think it's a great example for, uh, people out there who are thinking about transitioning or are in the middle of it, you know, uh-huh. um, they can afford all the surgeries they want they have all the money for everything they need you know which is more power to them i have nothing against people having money but a lot of us like had to scrounge for the shit we needed to transition and somebody like that to me is more of a role model you know somebody who actually lived that struggle you know who is there anybody out there that's in the public figure that i don't know really i mean i think ts 
women in porn are some of the best examples of it, of okay. trans women who really struggled and overcame their struggles by embracing themselves, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and we still, you know, are reviled by a lot of people. So it's like, you know, um, I think we're some of the strongest trans women out there. We're f out there, you know? We put our bodies out there for everyone to see um, from the top of our heads to our toes, you know? Um, and that takes a lot of courage, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just a real show of strength, I think, you know, mm -hmm. so. Do you, how does, um, now that you're in the adult business, you know, how does your family look upon it? They're fine with it. Mm -hmm. They're happy I'm not throwing my life in the gutter anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, they're happy I'm making good money and they're happy that I'm happy, so. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. nice. I mean, for, do you get a little more connection with your father no no but i mean you know i you know said he's very cold he wasn't there a lot his intentions are good though like he's a good guy you know mm -hmm. i didn't mean to make him seem like a sinister kind of shadowy figure or anything he's a good guy he just you know i think has trouble connecting with me because i'm such a far out crazy motherfucker you know um but i don't expect everyone to understand me so but he's a good dude yeah, that's cool so uh, people i said this a lot of times, the you see this board right here. Anyways, doesn't have much bearing over what we're saying. Sure. But this was the first agent, the first adult agent in the history of porn. This guy, he gave me this board. You know, Jim South, world modeling. Anyways, well, the point is of this is that the adult business, you know, has given so many people. He's part of it. You know, freedom because of the money. That's me. You know? Twitty. So. most liberating thing I could have ever done with my life pretty much and it's it's really beautiful right it's amazing I couldn't have asked for a better anything you know it saved me really in all honesty like you know I don't know where I'd be no, otherwise I feel it like it really saved your yeah maybe absolutely. death right possibly because too many drugs no you. absolutely I've had a few near death experiences already mm -hmm. due to drugs and drinking so you know I could be six feet under right now had I not found, or born really found me, honestly. I didn't go looking for it, kind of fell in my lap, you know? And I feel really, really blessed that it did because it really did give me a new lease on life, for sure. Really taught me a lot about my own ability to overcome obstacles. It gave me a lot of confidence to take on huge risks and projects and see things through to the end, you know? And really showed me a lot about work ethic, saving my money, dealing with all types of personalities. I mean, the list goes on and on. It really made me a very well-rounded person, and I'm super thankful for that. Uh, sometimes I think of porn as motherly. It is, yeah. It's very. Yeah. Um, it taught me a lot about life for sure. That's a trip. People would know for sure. That's you can believe whatever you want, but you, you until you're live, in it, yeah, live it. You know, it's, it made me wealthy and. And I had the best time of my life. I've so, never been healthier. So, yeah, that's yeah. right. So let's let's kind of fade away. We're almost done. Sure. But let's say, is there any like secrets you could tell me about any, you know, meetings with any Hollywood people or any celebrities? Nothing secret. I had a really bad incident with that guy Coolio a couple of years ago. I hate talking about this, but while we're on the subject, oh, there you know, yeah. Really? Um. He's just kind of a shitty person. <laughs> he like hit on me a bunch and took me out not knowing I was trans or a porn star. And I told him halfway through the date and I went home alone that night and he was a huge dick about it. He didn't even have the balls to come up to me himself and kick me out of his little date. He had his friends come up and do it for me. I got threatened with violence. This is a few years ago now. I'm not, you know, buttered about it. I don't like bringing it up because it makes me sound like a, yeah. like a, I don't even know what. Um, but I mean, you ask, I'll tell you. Okay. What, what about <laughs> nice experiences? You know, with, with that stuff, I don't really kiss and tell about. I was thinking, um, yeah. yeah, but but there's some. There are some. You'd be surprised. I I probably wouldn't be. But <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't be. <laughs> but I think right. the people would be. Right. Can we just like say it's like a new like recent stars, Hollywood movie stars, like like new and upcoming stars? No, like or? you know five ten year old 
not not ten years old, but well, stars. I haven't and less. personally with any of them, but I've heard a lot through oh, the rumor okay. mill. Yeah, okay. I mean, I do I do get contacted by celebrities and my like Instagram DM and stuff. Mm -hmm. Nobody like insanely major or anything, but people who are like recognizable for sure. They say, um, hey, what's up? Uh, yeah, sliding the DMs, you know what I mean? Um, it happens a lot more than one might think for sure. Um, they're curious, I'm sure, right? Very, yeah. yeah. A lot of people are curious these days. Oh. I find that's like one of the most common things I encounter is curiosity. Yeah. Curiosity killed the cat. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not in this case. But, uh, <laughs> so, um, is there any, like, you know, sometimes I talk about, like, well, let's say this. Is there any celebrities out there, any men, Hollywood actors or sports stars or musicians that you might want to give a shout-out to and say, hey, look me up one day? I don't think so. Really? <laughs> Not on here, no. <laughs> really? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I've got my celebrity crushes, sure. Yeah, you know, which ones? Who do I like? I really like Ryan Gosling. I think he's very sexy. Really? Okay. Um, Harrison Ford is really sexy. He's cool. I love Shout him. out to him. Um, who else am I really into? I've always had a thing for Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell's cool. I met him one time. Oh, really? I like he has a, a big lot. ass head. <laughs> Good. I met him on the, uh, the big ass brain. <laughs> uh, the Los Angeles one. He's the, you know, <laughs> whatever that one. You know, I like New York the sexy Plissken. 80s. Yeah. Yes, of course, Snake Plissken. So Snake my, Plissken my from Daddy. Escape from L.A. Yeah, yes, that's what I, I love those movies, yeah. yeah. I like all those 80s sexy men. The, are they yeah. more sexy then? Oh, they're sexy then, they're sexy now. Yeah. yeah, I love the 80s macho men, the Sylvester Stallones and the Kurt Russells and the Patrick Swayze's and all those people. Yeah, they were cool, right? They're cooler oh, yeah. than they were than Still they cool, today, right? yeah. still cool. I saw Stallone's movie the, the other day, uh, Last Blood. Oh, cool. It was I'm awesome. Sorry. It was radical. <laughs> I want to see that. I love Rambo, so, he, yeah. The, the first Rambo is unbelievable. Such They're all movie. great, but the first one's unbelievable. It's and this amazing. last one, for me, these two are the best ones. I also really like Keanu Reeves. He's probably the yeah. sexiest one, yeah. Really? I want him to message me. Keanu, if you're listening, I'm on Instagram. You should DM me. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's what I want to talk about, yeah. He's a, yeah. He seems like an intelligent guy, right? Seems like he has this... I love his... From what I've seen, I'm like I'm really fascinated by him. Yeah, he, I was at the Katsua, Katsuya Sushi Restaurant in Sino one day. He was sitting next to me. Cool. I I'm not one to say, hey man, what's up? What's up? I love your work. Yeah. No, he, but he's cool. If right. I saw him, I would say that. Yeah. I'd probably fucking flash him or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> tell, tell me about my Instagram information or something. Tell me about that. You got your breast. Yeah, I had a boob job. Yeah. Yeah. When did you do that? Two and a half years ago. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So you got some money from the business and... That's right. Yeah. Got my glow up. Yeah. Did it make you feel <laughs> good? Made me feel amazing. Yeah? Yeah, because I couldn't fit in any lingerie before this. Oh, yeah? Such a struggle, yeah. Uh -huh. Now I'm like, anything goes. And it's fantastic. And you go like this and the guy's looking. Like uh, and a little more modest than that. Yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm already on the internet everywhere, so... Uh -huh. When I'm out about in the world, I'm like kind of keep it a little more modest. See, I'm a dress right now, like a sweater vest or cardigan, and like a nice uh, collared yeah. shirt, you know? Yeah like, yeah, like a very quiet. Not really typical porn look, but yeah, yeah, you, know. you can't tell. You just look like a schoolgirl kind of. Exactly, which is a kind of a porn look in itself, but. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Do you get recognized on the street? I have been a bunch, yeah. yeah. How yeah. does it feel? It's, it's flattering. It's a little surreal. I got recognized in London when I was out there. Um, but it makes me happy that my work is appreciated more than anything. Really? That people are just, people see my stuff and like it, and it makes them happy, you know? And they say, uh, they say come up to you, we love your work. and Yeah, they'll come up to me, and they'll usually be like, are you Lena or are you Lena? Usually, like, I love your videos or I love your work. Keep on doing whatever the fuck you're doing. Typical shit like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not exactly being followed by paparazzi or anything, but yeah. it happens. You it know? Might, might be coming up, you never know. Mm, we'll see. I mean, does it feel like an invasion of your privacy, or do you feel cool no, with it? No, I'm cool with it. Yeah. You know, maybe if it was like happening like, every time I stepped out the front door, I'd feel a little mm. more invaded, but it's, you know, frequent enough that it feels good and infrequent enough that I don't feel violated. Yeah. Nice. I loved. Oh, yeah. I loved it, but then I yeah. got kind of crazy because I was really being oh, followed God. a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, it was a great time. I transitioned to making movies. Sure. You know, but um, yeah, you know, I'm very thankful for my time. 
you know. Great. As a performer. But um, so how did you get your name? I just made it up. Yeah? Yeah. I wanted, I liked Kelly because I'm Irish, and I wanted something that wasn't too dark, wasn't too light. It's kind of like whatever I wanted to be because I changed my aesthetic a lot. I'm constantly changing my hair. I'm constantly changing my look. So it's like really? I wanted something that would just always fit, you know? And I liked Lena because it's close to my actual legal name. I didn't want to get too far away from that. So kind of just popped in my head. Cool. Yeah, and it's cute and simple and yeah. it looks great when I write it in text and like graphic design and stuff. So yeah, it's also got a little bit of an 80s kind of thing to it. Kelly was very popular in the 80s, so. Totally. I knew a lot of Kelly. Exactly. So right. I kind of wanted to, like, keep on that. No matter what my aesthetic, it's always got, like, a bit of a retro vibe, so. Uh -huh. uh, I really knew that. There was a Lena, too, in the 90s, but um, a girl, right? Yeah, there's a Lena, too, now, so. Oh, is there? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, you? Me, what, and another one? there's a couple, or another Lena. Oh, uh, okay. Lena Paul, I think. So, I didn't ask you before, but I was, hopefully I was... Do you have any pictures of yourself when you're younger? My mother's got a few little, little pictures. But nothing with you? I don't have anything because it's not like I purposely avoided it. I grew up in a time where every year my computer would crash and I would lose all my shit. So anything digital I've ever had has been destroyed. And I you know, didn't really think at the time, like, oh, I should save this picture, I should save this picture. I did just post a pic from three years ago. Oh, let me see. The day I started porn, pretty much. That's cool. Um, I just posted that this morning, actually. Um, I look pretty similar, maybe a little skinnier because I was all fucked up on drugs, but <laughs> in Vegas. Oh, that was cool. So I never regret. That so was a great place. So that's the three years ago, that right when you first started. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. cool. Tell everybody your Instagram so they can hit you up. My Instagram is at Lena Kelly sixty four. My Twitter is Lena Kelly X X X. You can find my videos at lenakelly.minivids.com and you can interact with me and get all my little sexy vids and pics every day on onlyfans.com slash lenakelly. And my movie for Evil Angel comes out October 23rd. It's called Trans Nasty. And I'm telling you, don't take it from me. Go and watch it. It's really, really great. We are... Um Gonna depart now, and I appreciate you very much for Thanks coming. Thanks for having me. This is really fun. Spend time. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm gonna be hoarse tonight from all the talking. Good. <laughs> we had a good time, right? Definitely. Right. Yeah. We'll see everybody out there. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> in the world. See you later. Ah, thanks.